The adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Summoned to police headquarters by Bruce Wayne, otherwise known as Batman, Clark Kent was presented with a puzzling mystery. According to police reports, there had been three recent bank robberies in the outskirts of Metropolis, all of them apparently committed by the same person, a man seemingly possessed of superhuman strength. And in each case, the stolen money had been delivered to a different charitable organization. As Kent and Bruce Wayne were talking, a call came in that another bank had been burglarized the night before and that a passing motorist had seen the thief and reported he had been dressed in a blue costume and red cape similar to Superman's. As we continue now, Kent and Batman in his guise of Bruce Wayne have arrived at the village of Linhaven, 43 miles from Metropolis, where the latest burglary was committed. Sheriff Dawson is leading them to the rear of the one-story brick bank building. Listen. I'll show you how the feller got into the bank, but I'm telling you, you won't believe it. Well, here we are. You see that window? Look at that, Kent. The steel bars were wrenched out of their frame. Yes. Well, they probably hooked a steel cable to their car and pulled them out. No, sir. Well, how did they do it then, Sheriff? There was only one feller. The one Doc Trumbull seen running out of here with the satchel dressed up in the masquerade costume. I figured he ripped them bars out with just his hand. Nonsense. They're solid steel bars and they were anchored in concrete. Why, it would take Superman Easy, here. Chum. I uh, I mean it would take a man of superhuman strength to do that. Well, this here fellow's got a heap of strength, Mr. Wayne. I figure he's the same one who broke into the banks in Glen Forest, Hightown, and Thomasville. He yanked the bars off a window in Glen Forest just like he done here, and he pulled two steel doors clean off of their hinges in Hightown and Thomasville. Now, I can't believe it. Well, why do you say he did it with just his hands, Sheriff? On account of there wasn't no marks on them windows or doors. None of the bars were sawed and none of the doors were jimmied. And no explosive was used either. Why, you could see somebody just laid to and ripped them off. Well, he could have used a cable. I tell or... you, he didn't. On account of he couldn't have used no cable on the wall door. What do you mean? Well, come on into the bank. All right. I'll show you. Never in all my born days did I ever see anything like that. Now, here's the vault room. Ain't no windows down here and only the one set of steps to get down and up from the main floor. So how could the feller hook up any steel cables and run them outside to a car? It ain't possible. Hmm. Well, uh, where's the vault you say he opened? It's right around this turn, Bruce. That's right. Well, how'd you know, Mr. Kent? How? Oh, I, uh, I... Great Jupiter. Look, Kent. This big steel vault door was wrenched open. Yes, and the door hasn't been cut and it hasn't been drilled. That means no explosive was used. Of course there wasn't. I tell you, this, uh, this, uh, this Superman feller done it with just his own strength. It makes me shiver just to think of a crook that strong running around loose. Well, there's only one man strong enough to rip this vault door open, and he's no crook. Oh, thanks, Bruce. Hey, wait a minute. Don't better not touch the door yet. There may be fingers, fingerprints on it. I imagine it's already been dusted for fingerprints. Right, Sheriff? That's right, young fella. The only prints on it was the cashiers, the president of the bank, Mr. Hoffman, and Joe the porter. Joe's a wingy little fellow, and apart from Mr. Hoffman and the cashier not being big, strong fellas either... They know but... the combination of the vault. That's right. Say, you two think mighty quick. Look, Sheriff, your report said a Dr. Trumbull, I believe, saw somebody leaving the bank last night. That's right. Doc seen the feller run out with a satchel, which must have had the money in it. Well, why didn't he chase him? Well, he couldn't. Doc had Mrs. Sawyer in the car. You see, she had appendicitis, and he was taking her to the hospital. Oh, I see. Also, he says this feller got away awful fast. Just like he was there one minute and gone up and smoked the next. What? You mean he just vanished into thin air? Yep, that's just about the size of it. Where can we see Dr. Trumbull, Sheriff? Oh, no, let's see. It's, uh, it's 11.30. Uh, Doc ought to be getting home for lunch about this time. Yeah, I'll take you over there. Oh, nice of you to go to all this trouble, Sheriff. Yes, it certainly is. Oh, it ain't no trouble at all. <laughs> Maybe you'll give me a big write-up in your newspaper, Mr. Kent. If you do, it might help me some come the election next June. They won't mind too much if you want to take some pictures of me either. This man you saw leaving the bank last night, Dr. Trumbull, can you describe him to us? Why, yes, Mr. Kent, I got a pretty good look at him. He came around from the rear of the bank just as I turned out of Elm into Main Street. My headlights were right on him. What did he look like? He was a pretty big fellow, well built. How big? Why, uh, I'd say he was just about your height, Mr. Kent. 
Come to think of it, he was just about your build, too. Uh, what time was this, Doctor? Early this morning, about a quarter after one. Did you get a look at the man's face? No, he was wearing a mask. Oh. But he had this strange costume on. What was it like? I told you, Mr. Candy. I'd you... rather Dr. Trumbull told me, if you don't mind, Sheriff. Well, it was a blue skin-tight costume with a flowing red cape. Just like... Yes? Well, like the costume Superman wears. Yeah, but I can't make myself believe it was Superman. He's always been on the side of law and order. He's one of the finest and greatest men we have. It couldn't have been Superman. Of course not. Uh, what makes you so sure, Mr. Kent? How do you know? Well, I know. At least I think I do. You think? Now, look, Why, you... I never did believe all the talk and stuff in the papers about this Superman fella. Never believed there was a Superman. But, well, now I, I ain't so sure. There's a Superman, all right. But he didn't have anything to do with the bank robbery well, last I night. I don't know. Nobody but a feller like they say Superman is could have ripped them bars off the window and pulled the vault door off and done the same things at the banks in Glen Forest and Hightown and Thomasville. Uh, excuse me. Dr. Trumbull speaking. Who? Yes, he's here. Uh, just a moment, please. For you, Sheriff. For me? How oh, much prize, Doc? Yeah? Uh, who wants me? Oh, hello, Sid. No, I didn't catch a feller yet. Is that you? What? What, Shed? Give me that again. Uh, you don't mean it. All of it? Well, I'll be... Uh, sure, sure, I'll be right over. Wait for me, Shed. Oh, the whole look crazy. No, 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 I can't believe it. Well, what's wrong, sir? Oh, well, when you hear this, Mr. Wayne, you too, Mr. Kent, and Doc, you know the $10,000 that was stolen out of the bank last night? Of course. What about it? Oh, well, that was Sid Hoffman, president of the bank. Yes? He just got a call from one of the big charities in Metropolis, the European War Orphans Relief. Wait a minute. Uh, you don't yes, mean it. Yes, yes, just like it happened after them other three robberies in Glen Forest, Hightown, and Thomasville. This charity gets a package by special messenger an hour ago. And dang if it ain't the $10,000. Well, oh, no. how can they be sure it's the money from this bank, Sheriff? Well, the card come with it, Sid Hoffman said. Had the name of the bank written right on it. Just like the others, Kent. What do you make of it? Ah, nothing. Unless... Unless what? I'll tell you later. I want to get to the office of that war relief charity as soon as possible. That's a good idea. Uh, let's go. What time is it? Well... There's your answer. Noon whistles at the aircraft factory. But I gotta be getting over to the bank. We'll give you a lift in our car, and then go on to Metropolis. Come on, Bat. Uh, Bruce. Uh, goodbye, Doctor, and thanks. Not at all. Yes, thanks, Doctor. So long. Hurrying from the doctor's house, Kent and Batman drive back to Metropolis. At the executive offices of the European War Orphans Relief Society, Mr. Keeler, secretary of the society, permits them to examine the brown paper parcel in which the strange gift of $10,000 had arrived a few hours before. Uh, nothing on this paper wrapper, Kent. Neither inside or out. Oh. May we see the card that came with the money, Mr. Keeler? Well, I don't know, Mr. Kent. Inspector Henderson left word that nothing was to be disturbed until he got here. He's been delayed on another matter. Well, I showed you my special police pass signed by the inspector himself. I'm sure he wouldn't object to your letting us see the card. Well, I don't suppose there's any harm in showing it to you. The inspector's men have already examined it for fingerprints. I have it right here. Yeah. Here you are, Mr. Wayne. Uh, thank you. Hmm... Oh. A gift from the Lynn Haven National Bank with the compliments of a friend. Let me see it, Bruce. A sure thing. Thanks. What? Great Scott! What's the matter, Kent? You're pale as a ghost. Kent, what's the matter? Pale and trembling, Clark Kent stares at the card in his hand. Why has it shocked him so? At the executive offices of the European War Orphans Relief Society... Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne, who was really the famous Batman, were shown the card enclosed with the stolen bank money. Suddenly paling, Kent led Wayne a few feet away out of earshot of the society secretary. Wayne is demanding... What's come over you, Kent? You're pale as a ghost and you're trembling. This card. The inscription on it. What about it? It's... It's in my handwriting. His eyes literally popping from his head. Batman stares at Clark Kent in open-mouthed amazement. What does this mean? How could Kent have possibly written the card enclosed with the money stolen from the Lynn Haven Bank? A strange and mysterious threat has suddenly loomed up to menace Superman. Four banks located in small towns near Metropolis 
have been broken into by a man of seemingly superhuman strength who ripped open heavily barred windows and steel vault doors as though they were made of cardboard. Following the fourth burglary, a figure in a blue costume and red cape curiously similar to Superman's was seen leaving the bank carrying a satchel. And amazingly enough, the following morning, the money stolen from the bank was delivered to the European War Orphans Relief Society in Metropolis. In their guises of Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne, Superman and his famous friend Batman hurried to the offices of the Relief Society, where Mr. Keeler, the manager, showed them the card that had accompanied the money. As he read the card, Kent turned pale. Drawing Bruce Wayne to one side, he whispered, This card, the inscription on it. What about it? it it's in my handwriting. What? Yes, it's in my handwriting. Now, alone in a small vacant office adjoining Mr. Keeler's, Bruce Wayne demands an explanation. What are you talking about, Kent? What do you mean it's your handwriting? Just what I said. Look, I'll show you. You got a fountain pen? Oh, sure, here. Here. Sit down at the but, desk. But... Now, wait, I've got my notebook. Now, watch. Let's see, now the card says... A uh, gift from the Lindhaven National Bank. Hey, wait a minute. Huh? Since when are you left-handed? Superman is. But you're Superman, remember? I'm also Clark Kent. As Superman, I write with my left hand. As Kent, with my right. Each hand writes differently. Oh, I get it. An extra protection for your double identity. Yeah, I'll have to learn that trick myself. Let's see, what was the rest of that inscription? Oh, yes, here we are. With the compliments of a friend. There. Now, compare my handwriting with that on the card. Mm, let's see. Say, they do look alike. Look alike. They're identical. Look. Look at the capital letters. And the way the G is formed in gift. Uh-huh. And look here. L look, look at the D in friend. Boy, this is amazing, Ken. Oh, it certainly is. Oh, the whole setup's amazing. Witnesses say the bank robber's about your size and build. He apparently possesses superhuman strength. He wears a blue costume and a red cape. And now we discover that his handwriting is identical to yours. Oh, I can't figure it out. Neither can I. Unless... Unless what? Oh, no, no, it's too fantastic. You're probably thinking the same thing I am. What's that? The possibility that there may be another Superman. Oh, no, there couldn't be. Why not? Because there couldn't. Well, you came from another planet, didn't you? Yes, from Krypton, but I was the only survivor when the planet blew up. You sure about that? Yes, of course I'm sure. Well, at least... At least what? At least I'm reasonably sure. Now, we're getting somewhere. Isn't it within the realm of possibility that there might have been another survivor? Another potential Superman who came to Earth when the planet blew up? Well, yes, I suppose it's possible, but... But, uh, but... you don't want to believe it. Oh. oh, frankly, I don't blame you. Particularly since his hobby seems to be breaking into banks. Oh, no, no, I can't believe it. I can't believe there's another Superman. It, it just doesn't seem possible. Well, that's what they said about the steamboat, electricity, and the telephone. But I know I was Krypton's only survivor. You know, but you're not sure. Well, listen, I came to Earth in the model of a spaceship my father had built. There was only one model. How could anyone else have gotten to Earth? Krypton was a big place, wasn't it? Well, yes, I suppose so. At the time, I was too young to know. Maybe someone else had a spaceship. And came to Earth in it? Uh-huh. Well, then, where has he been all these years? Why is he suddenly showing up? Uh, that's a tough question. Well, we're certainly not going to get the answer here. I've got to think this thing out carefully, if I can think at all. What do you mean? Oh, right now, I've got a terrific headache. Superman with a headache? Gosh, that's funny. I wish I thought so. Oh, I don't mean the headache's funny. I mean the idea of your getting them seems a little peculiar. Well, lately, I've had them quite often. I... I think I'll go back to my apartment. That's a good idea. And I'll drop down to headquarters and see if anything else has come in on that last bank job. All right. Say, um, maybe it's your eyes, Kent. Using them a lot lately? No, no more than usual. Haven't seen a doctor, have you? No. Well, it might be a good idea if you did. Chances are it's just some little thing. Yeah, it could be. Well, let's go. Oh, wait a minute. This card... Better return it to Mr. Keeler. Uh, here's the card, Mr. Keeler, and thanks very much for your courtesy. You're quite welcome, Mr. Kent. Uh, my thanks, too, Mr. Keeler. Don't mention it. Goodbye. Goodbye. Elevators to the left. Okay. Oh, that headache's bothering you, isn't it? Uh-huh. Getting worse. Oh, I think a lot of it's due to this mess. Worrying about who's responsible. Uh, I don't think so. I started having these headaches before this broke. 
Uh, here's the elevator. After you. Thanks, Bruce. You go on home, Kent. And I'll call you from headquarters if I learn anything. Fine. Leaving the building in which the War Orphans Relief Society is located, Batman takes a taxi to police headquarters while Kent returns to his apartment. There, his headache easing up somewhat, he picks up a newspaper and reads the report of the latest exploit of the Superman bank robber while waiting for Batman's call. But suddenly, unaccountably, the paper slips from his fingers and his head falls forward on his chest. He breathes regularly, deeply, fast asleep in his chair. An hour goes by, another hour, and the sun dips a red ball of fire below the cold skyscrapers of the great city. At 7 o'clock, the telephone rings in Kent's apartment. It rings again and again, then for a time stops. At 7.30, it rings once more, but remains unanswered. Throughout the evening, it rings at intervals. And finally, when the hands of the mantel clock in the dark room point to five minutes before midnight, the shrilling clamor of the phone is stilled as a hand reaches out and picks up the instrument. Hello? Kent? Yes? Yeah, this is Bruce Wayne. Oh, hello, Bruce. Where the dickens have you been? I've been ringing you steadily for the past half hour. Oh, I've been right here, Bruce. Hey, it's dark. What time is it? Almost midnight. Listen, Kent. What? You mean I've been asleep in my chair for six hours? How do I know where you've been? Now, listen to me. But it's impossible. I just never dozed off like this before. Will you stop interrupting and listen? Our friend did it again. What? You mean... Yes, he broke into the bank at Groveton an hour ago. Tore a steel bar door off its hinges, ripped the vault open, and got away with $20,000. Great Scott, an hour ago in Groveton? Yes. That's about 50 miles out. Near Lynn Haven. I was thinking if we got there fast... We'll get out there plenty fast. Uh, where are you? At police headquarters. Well, rush down to the parking lot in back of it. I'll pick you up in less than a minute. Step on it now. I'll be waiting for you. Oh. What did I do a thing like that? Out of these clothes? <clears throat> what made me fall asleep like that? Only I'd been awake when Batman called before. <clears throat> Just don't understand it. There we are. All set. Now, up with this window... Out! And away! Leaping from his apartment window, Superman streaks through the night sky to the parking lot behind police headquarters where Batman awaits him. Carrying Batman, Superman rocketed from Metropolis to the village of Groveton, 50 miles away, where the latest amazing bank robbery had taken place little more than an hour before. As we join them now, once more in their guises of Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne, they are examining the heavy steel bolted door which had been torn from its hinges at the entrance to the bank. A deputy police officer stands guard within the now brightly illuminated bank building, while nearby a group of excited villagers are gathered about a shrill-voiced man and woman. Sure, Sam, it was right here. We've been coming home for the quarters after Mr. Sam, I said. I swear to heaven I see you. You're right, you're right, Sarah. Eh, uh, no doubt of it, Kent. The same man who did the other bank jobs pulled this one. Oh, just look at that steel door. Never see anything like it? Oh, if only I hadn't fallen asleep. If we'd come here soon after you phoned me the first time. Oh, no use crying over spilt milk. Oh, I suppose not. I can't understand how I fell asleep. Yeah, I've seen it with my own eyes. So did Sam. Didn't you, Sam? Did you hear that, Kent? Sure did. That woman saw our man. Yes, come on over there. You know, he was dressed in a blue costume and a red cape. He was flying. That's what he was, yeah. like a bird. One minute he was in front of his bag. Next minute he was up in the air, what? flying off. Scott! Stunned, Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne hear the man and woman describe how the bank robber, wearing a costume and cape similar to Superman's, had leaped high into the air and flown away. What can this mean? Has Superman been wrong all these years in believing that he is the only living creature possessed of superhuman powers? Is there another? A series of amazing bank robberies committed by a mysterious individual who not only seems to possess superhuman strength, but where's the blue costume and red cape of Superman is puzzling Clark Kent and his friend Bruce Wayne, otherwise known as Batman. The robberies themselves are peculiar because in each instance, the money stolen has been forwarded to a charitable organization with a card that says, Compliments of a Friend. Examining one of the cards, Kent was shocked to discover it was in his handwriting, the handwriting he uses in his role of Superman. 
As we continue now, Kent and Batman, or Bruce Wayne, are at the scene of the latest bank robbery in the town of Groveton, just outside Metropolis. They are approaching a small group of local people, two of whom, a man and a woman, were eyewitnesses to the robbery. Listen. Excuse me, please. My name is Clark Kent. I'm a reporter for the Metropolis Daily Planet. This is my friend Bruce Wayne. How do you do? Hey, hear that, Sarah? Reporter. Nonsense, the boy. Uh, uh, name's Wilkins. Sam Wilkins. How do you do, Mr. Wilkins? Make sure you get that spelling right. Ain't no C in it. Right. Got a fella in town named Wilkins spelled with a C. I'm Sarah Wilkins. Wilkins. You going to write us up in the paper? Well, I'd like to get your story first. I overheard you say that you'd seen the man who robbed the bank tonight. Eh, clear as I see you, young fella. We was both right across the street in front of the meat market. No, Sarah. We were just passing the palace barbershop. Sam Wilkins, yeah. we was in front of the meat market. I remember telling you to stop so I could see what specials was posted on the window for tomorrow. That was before, Sarah. We was coming to the well, palace. Well, the barber bar- shop hey. seems to be next door to the meat market, so it doesn't make much difference. Just tell her what you saw. Well, you'll never believe it, young fella. I wouldn't uh, believe it if Sam and me hadn't seen it with our own eyes. Still got to pinch myself to make sure I didn't dream it. It wasn't uh, no dream, Sam, because I've seen it, too. So what was it? What we seen. Well, sure, but what did you see? I'm telling you. We came out in the square, see, from 3rd Street. Uh, that's 3rd uh, Street over there where the Statue of Lincoln is. We can visit uh, the Fowlers. Their boy just got home from the Pacific. Uh, yes, oh, it's my all, right, all right, all right, all right. All right. You've been visiting the Fowlers, and you came out of 3rd Street into the square on your way home. Now, when you got to the meat market... The barbershop. The meat market? Well, between the barbershop and the meat market. You heard or saw something, is that right? We sure did. We saw this bank robber. It wasn't like that, Sam. First... We heard the door of the bank fall down on the sidewalk. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We heard this big crash. And, and say, did you fellas see that door? Yes, well, it's we a saw. big, thick door with solid steel bars, and it was set in stone. But this robber fellow ripped it clean off its hinges. Yes, we know. Tell him about the bank vault, well, Sam. How he pulled the steel door well, off. We the know ball. all about that. Yeah. Now, please, Mr. Wilkins and Mrs. Wilkins, tell us about the man you saw. Yeah, well... Uh, uh, I'll tell him, Sam. After we heard this loud noise... That was the door falling down. We looked across uh, the street, and there was this big man running out of the bank. Yeah. He had a set. In his hand. Had the money from the bank in it. Of course. He was a big man, you say? The biggest man I ever saw. He must have been eight feet tall. Oh, no, he wasn't, Sarah. He was pretty tall and well built, but, well, I wouldn't say he was any bigger than Mr. Uh, uh, what'd you say your name was again? Kent. Uh, Kent. Oh, yes, Kent. Kent. I said he was lots bigger, a good foot taller, I'd say. I tell you he wasn't. Now, look, Sam, I know what I saw. All right, all right, all right, all right. Never mind. But you asked me how big he was, and I'm telling you. Didn't he you was... hear the man say, never mind, Sarah? Never seen such a woman for wagging her tongue. Now, you look uh, uh, Sam. Please, I... please, it doesn't matter, really. We know he was tall and well-built. Now, how was he dressed? Like he was going to a masquerade party. He had on a blue costume and a red cape, and he was wearing a mask. That's right. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, wasn't it a red costume and a blue cape? No, it was a blue costume. Here we go again. And a red cape. I'm not so sure about well, that. I well, I It really I'm doesn't a... matter. Uh, where did he go when he came out of the bank? Well, you'll never believe what happened then. I'll tell him, Sam. No, you don't. Yeah. No, you don't. Oh. I'm going to tell this part. You see, he ran out of the bank, like we told you, and across the street to where them twin oaks stand at the end of the village green over there. And the next thing you know, he jumped. Didn't jump rightly. He left. Jumped, left, means the same. Well, go on, Mr. Wilkins. Well, he up and he, he, he up and left, clean over them big oaks and flew away. Are you sure? I don't believe it. Well, we're seeing him, I tell you. Clear as we see you this minute, young yeah. fella. The moon was shining bright as a new penny. Just like it is now. And we see him fly away carrying the satchel with the bank's money in it. Uh-huh, he flew that way to the east. No, no, it was more to the south, Sam. He went east, I tell you. Come over here, Bruce. He went over the church steeple, yes. didn't he? Well, he sure he did, but then he turned over. No, south, over the great elevator. What do you make of this, Kent? I don't know what to make of it. If this man really flew... He couldn't have. You're the only person in the world who can fly. Well, that's what I always thought, but... Mr. and Mrs. Wilkins there swear they saw the man leap up into the air. Oh, they were excited. You heard how they contradicted each other. One said he was eight feet tall, and the other one said he was... Mr. Kent! Mr. Kent! Who's that? Oh, it's Constable Higby. Uh, Here I am, Constable! promised to tell me if they found out anything else. Just got a phone call from Chief Roberts over to Benson City. Oh. The fella came down there. The bank robber? Yeah, showed up with the money. You mean they caught him? I ain't sure whether they caught him or not. The connection was kind of bad. I gotta get right over to Benson City. I'm gonna get Sam and Sarah Wilkins to identify him. You two can come along. I've got my car over there on the other side of the bank. Well, thanks, Constable, but we'll go over alone. Come on, Bruce, between these stores. What for? What do you think? Oh, the Superman Express takes off for Benson City, eh? Uh-huh. As soon as I strip down to my costume. Now, oh, here, this is a good spot. Want me to get in the Batman's rig? No, no, no. When we get to Benson City, I'll change back to Kent. 
I just hope they hold on to that fella. Oh, I've got my fingers crossed. There we are. All set. All right, hang on, chum. Let her rip. Here we go. Up and away! Leaping from the shadowed street with Bruce Wayne clinging to his shoulders, Superman streaks through the dark sky to Benson City, 33 miles away. A few minutes later, once more in his guise and garb of Clark Kent, he and Wayne are in the office of Police Chief Morris, where they are introduced to Mrs. Green, a clear-eyed, gray-haired woman. Mrs. Green is the matron of the old people's home, Mr. Kent. That's a mile and a half north of here. That's where this Superman bank robber came down. Uh, why do you keep calling him the Superman bank robber, Chief? <laughs> well, Mr. Wayne, I never heard of anyone else who could fly. And that fellow seems to have superhuman strength. Just the same, he isn't Superman. Oh, never mind that, Bruce. Would you mind if Mrs. Green told us exactly what happened, Chief? Sure, why not? You mind telling it again, Mrs. Green? Not at all. I... I'm still a bit upset, though. Well, it often helps to talk over things that are bothering you. So I've heard. Well, as Chief Morris told you, I'm the matron of the old people's home. I was just going to my room tonight after making my rounds when I heard a loud banging on the door. Uh, what time was this? About 11.30. I see. Uh, go ahead, Mrs. Green. I hurried to the door and opened it. A tall man was standing there. He had a strange costume on, red cape over his shoulders... He was wearing a mask. Mask? I was quite startled. I said, who are you? He didn't answer. He just held out a satchel he was carrying. I asked him what it was. He, he just laughed. A deep laugh and offered me the satchel again. I asked him again what it was and who he was, but he just laughed, put the satchel down at my feet. Uh-huh. Then he turned and ran down the steps toward the road, but, but before he got to the road... Yes? Before he got to the road, he... He jumped high into the air and flew away. Uh oh Just like he flew away from Groveton after he robbed the bank there. How do you know he robbed the bank? Because there was $20,000 in that satchel he gave Mrs. Green, the same amount that was stolen from the Groveton bank. And get this. The serial numbers of the bills checked with the Groveton money. Oh, I... I don't understand it. I... I'm afraid I do. What do you mean, Kent? I'll tell you later. Well, uh, goodbye, Mrs. Green and Chief Morris. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thanks, Thanks very much. You're welcome, Mr. Kent. Goodbye. Uh, wait, goodbye. Kent. Uh, you said... I said later, Bruce. All right. There's nobody around. Now, what did you mean when you said you understand all this? I'm pretty sure I know who the bank robber is. What? You do? Yes. Wait just a minute and I'll tell you. Outside the small police station in Benson City, Bruce Wayne, who is really Batman, waits anxiously for Kent to speak. Finally, loses patience. Come on, Kent, give. You said you know who the bank robber is. I... I'm almost certain I do. Well, then tell me, man, who is he? I think you're looking at him. You mean... Oh, Kent. Kent, No! According to all the evidence, it looks like I've been doing it as Superman. Thunderstruck, Bruce Wayne stares at Clark Kent, who has just said that he thinks the mysterious bank robber is himself, Superman. Can Kent be serious? What is the explanation for his startling statement? A series of amazing bank robberies in small towns outside Metropolis has greatly alarmed Superman and his friend Batman. In each case, the burglar was apparently an individual of superhuman strength who seemingly bent steel bars and ripped open massive vaults as if they were made of putty. And then, after he had escaped safely, sent all the stolen money to charity. Several witnesses testified that the strange burglar wore a blue costume and red cape similar to Superman's and that he had left the scene by leaping into the air and soaring away like some great bird. As we continue now, outside the small police station at Benson City, some 60 miles from Metropolis, Clark Kent has just startled Bruce Wayne, also known as Batman, with an amazing statement. As Wayne stares open-mouthed, Kent repeats the statement. I... I'm afraid I'm the mysterious bank robber. What? Yes, after all the evidence we've heard, what else can I think? Oh, look, pal, this is no time for jokes. Unfortunately, it's not a joke. You see, Bruce, hold I've been... It, hold it. We can't talk here. Too many people around. Come on. Now, there's a diner across the street. Now, pull yourself together. 
Maybe I ought to give myself up. Oh, stop raving. I'm not raving. The trouble is... Save it till we're inside. All right. Oh, good. No customers. We can have some privacy. Uh, take that booth on the corner. Okay. Would you mind turning the radio down a little, Mac? I'll shut it off, Jack. Uh, thanks. Sit down, Ken. All right. You still think I'm joking, don't you, Bruce? You must be. Well, I'm not. Look, Ken, you're up against one of the toughest problems of your life. You've got to plan a sensible course of action. Well, I don't see what I can do except give myself up to the police. After oh, all, stop it. it. You know the answer to this as well as I do. And the answer isn't you. It must be. Oh, nonsense. Let me, gents. Um, I'll have scrambled eggs and bacon, butter toast, and a glass of milk. How about you, Ken? Oh, nothing, thanks. I'm not hungry. Uh, double that order. No, I don't. Uh, put it on the fire, Mac. Okay. Look, I... You can't starve yourself, Kent. You're going to need all your strength when you meet up with that other Superman. That other what? Don't look so surprised. You know what I'm talking about. You still think there's another Superman? I don't think anymore. I know. Several people saw him fly. They all can't be crazy. There must be another one. But I tell you, there isn't. There can't be. I was the only survivor when the planet Krypton exploded. To the best of your knowledge, you were. Look, Kent, let's face facts. There has to be another Superman. But there's no other way to explain it. Yes, there is. All right, how? Well, all I can think of is maybe I'm the one who's been breaking into those banks as Superman. I really believe you're serious. Well, of course I am. But but how can you possibly think that... Well, that you... Wait a minute now, wait a minute. Relax, I'll explain. You remember yesterday when I had a splitting headache and had to go home? Yes. Remember I fell asleep in my chair and slept for hours until you woke me around midnight? Now, go on. I never had a headache in my life, Bruce. And I never fell asleep in my chair either, until a few weeks ago. It was just after my experience with the Atom Man and the Cyclotron when I was exposed to atomic energy. What are you driving at, Kent? Just this. In the past few weeks, I've had frequent headaches, and I've often caught myself dozing or wandering around in sort of a haze. And, well, I'm just afraid that during these sleeping or dozing spells, I suffer of uh, a kind of amnesia, a loss of memory, and I don't know what I'm doing. And you rob banks and then have no recollection of it afterwards. Well... Yes, at least that's what I think. Oh, Ken, I'm amazed at you. Why? Let's suppose you did walk in your sleep or have amnesia or whatever you want to call it. And, well, you still wouldn't do anything wrong. Well, you've always been on the side of law and order. But when I'm asleep and I don't know what I'm doing? Well, you still wouldn't do anything wrong. No, 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 you're way off base. There's another Superman and I'm going to prove it. How? Well, something occurred to me a little while ago. Something you said. Oh, that... God, here it comes again. What? Another one of those headaches. Listen, Ken, you really ought to see a doctor. Yeah, I intend to. Oh... My doctor's out of town, but he'll be back today after tomorrow. I'm sorry. Go ahead with what you were saying. Okay. When you took your notebook out before, I noticed a map on the inside cover. Oh, yes, it's a, it's a state map. Well, that's what I want. Let me see it. Sure. What for? Here, I'll show you. Okay. Here you are. You don't mind if I mark it up a little bit? No, no, go ahead. All right. Now, look. Here's where the first bank was robbed. Glen Forest. I'll put an X on it. Okay. The uh, second bank was at uh, Hightown, right? Right. High town, high town. High... Oh, here we are. Yeah. I'll put an X there, too. I think I know what you're driving at, but it's no good because... Keep your shirt on, Chum. The third job was at, uh, oh, let's see now. Where... Thomasville. Here it is down oh. here. Oh, yes, yes. But you're wasting your time. No, Bruce. I'm not. The fourth robbery was at Lynn Haven. There it is, over there. Uh-huh. Yeah, right there. Ah, uh, bacon and eggs coming up. Uh, just set them down on the table, please. Okay. Then, uh... Groton, right, Kent? Right. It's southwest of your last mark. Uh, I've got it. Look, Kent. Hold it, hold it. Uh, anything else? Uh, no, that's all, thanks. Okay. See what you were doing with that map. Reach for the cross marks on the map. See the pattern they make? Yes, yes, a three-quarters arc of a circle. I noticed that before, but... I know you did. That's what started me thinking. Now watch. I'm going to complete the circle. There we are. See? Uh-huh. The arc I just put in runs through two towns, Lordville and Somerset. You figure I'm going to pull my next bank job in one of those two towns, is that it? No, not you. The other Superman. I tell you there isn't any other. And I tell you there is. There must be. For some reason, he's following the arc of a circle. And if the three of us lay for him in both towns... Three of us? Yes. You, Robin, and I. Oh. You cover the bank in Lordville. Robin and I can cover the one in Somerset. Well, now, look. Wait a minute, Bruce. Suppose I fall asleep on we'll the We'll take job. a chance on that. He shows up at either one of the two banks, says, I think he will. Why, well, will grab him. Well, with all due respect to you, Batman, if he is another Superman, as you seem to think, I'm afraid you and Robin won't be much of a match for him. I've thought of that. We'll carry a walkie-talkie radio, and so will you. Now, Lordville and Somerset are only 20-odd miles apart. If he shows up at Somerset, we'll call you, and you can get over in a hurry. 
Hey, maybe you've got something there at that. If he doesn't show up at Lordville or Somerset, but shows up some other place, then we'll know I'm not the mysterious bank robber. Exactly. Now, come on. Let's eat and get going. Okay. We've got a lot to do today. The last three robberies have taken place on succeeding nights. And unless I miss my guess, we're going to meet our Superman friend tonight. Eagerly, Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne, who in reality are Superman and Batman, make detailed plans to trap the mysterious superhuman bank robber that night. It is now late at night. Batman and Robin, wearing their costumes and hooded masks, are crouched in the dark doorway of a store. Across the deserted, moonlit street is the one-story brick building of the Somerset National Bank. Strapped to Robin's back is a portable walkie-talkie radio. No call from Superman yet. I guess that means our bird hasn't shown up at Lordville. I guess not, Robin. What's that? Take it easy, take it easy. It's just the town clock. Say, it just struck once. Once for one o'clock. Catch on? I'll figure it out on my adding machine sometime. But look, according to the police reports, this fellow always does his bank busting job between 11 and 12.30. And now it's one. Well, maybe he was delayed. Well, maybe he's taking a night off. I don't think so. Listen, do you really think there is another Superman? I'm convinced there is. Well, well, golly, if there is and he comes here tonight, we're going to have one sweet job on our hands. You're not kidding, Robin. The one time we called for help, and fast. Well, who did we call? Oh, you mean Superman. Right, and Lord, though. Say, better check the walkie-talkie. I did, but I'll check again. Quiet. What was that? Quiet. Look, Robin. Christopher Columbus. Quiet, Robin. Is it our Superman or, or the other one? Whoever he is, he dropped out of the sky. Look. He's walking toward the bank. Now he's looking around. He's got a mask on. It can't be our Superman. Quick, Robin. Get on that walkie-talkie. Call Superman at Lordville. Tell him to get here at once. Okay. Come on, hurry. Calling Superman. Calling Superman. Not so loud. Superman, come in. Superman. Calling Superman. Oh, this guy heard you. He's coming over here. Yes, keep calling, Robin. Calling Superman. Superman. Where are you, Superman? Come in. What's the matter, Robin? I don't know. He doesn't answer. Drop the walkie-talkie and stand by for action. Here comes trouble. Bracing themselves, Batman and Robin prepare to meet the charge of the tall, powerfully built man looming out of the darkness and wearing the blue costume and red cape identified with Superman. Who is he? And how did he drop out of the sky without warning? Is he another creature possessed of superhuman powers? Or, as Clark Kent suspects, is he the real Superman? A series of amazing bank robberies committed by a mysterious individual apparently possessed of superhuman powers who, strangely enough, forwards all the stolen money to charity has posed an almost frightening problem to Superman and his friend, the famous Batman. It is Batman's belief that another Superman exists, another survivor of the planet Krypton. Superman himself, however, has an even more startling theory. He believes that because he was exposed to the nerve-shattering effects of atomic energy during his titanic battles with the Atom Man, that he is suffering from a form of amnesia, a loss of memory, and that he himself is committing the strange burglaries without having any knowledge of what he is doing. Yesterday, as you recall, he was about to give himself up to the police when Batman proposed a plan. In his guise of Bruce Wayne, he outlined the plan to Clark Kent, who, as we know, is Superman. The way I figure it is like this, Kent. Now, according to this map, all the banks that were broken into are in towns that form a circle within a 50-mile radius of Metropolis. Uh Uh-huh. Now, see, I've marked the circle off. Yes, except that the circle isn't complete. Right. There are two towns missing. Two towns that haven't been touched yet. Lordville and Somerset. I see, and you think one of them is next on the list. Right. Either Lordville or Somerset. Now, my idea is this. Tonight, Robin and I can watch the bank at Somerset while you keep an eye on the one at Lordville. As we continue now, it is long after midnight. Batman and Robin, hidden in a doorway opposite the Somerset Bank, were amazed to see a powerfully built man wearing a blue costume and red cape drop from the sky and approach the bank. Quickly, Robin tried to contact Superman and Lordville by walkie-talkie, but there was no response. Hearing Robin's voice, the man in the cape suddenly wheeled and faced them. In the moonlight, Batman and Robin could see he was masked. Squaring his broad shoulders, he started across the deserted street in their direction. Listen. 
Uh-oh, here he comes, Batman. Get set for trouble, boy. Trouble is right. If he's really a Superman... He must be. He dropped out of the sky. Then we're dead ducks. Maybe not. We can just keep him busy till our Superman gets here. How's he gonna get here? He didn't answer our call. Well, maybe he heard it but didn't bother to answer. This is it, Robin. Let's go to town. I'm right with you, Pat. Uh, 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 chin looking fighting. Uh, so does his nose. Uh, Where's going, Robin? Uh, you ain't going yourself. Uh, What's that haymaker? Uh, pardon me, stranger. Your chin's showing again. Uh, uh, and here's a lovely curtain for your eyes. Very pretty, Robin. Uh, Thanks. But he doesn't uh, fall down. Uh, Look out, Batman. Don't let him grab you. Uh, oh, he's got me. Uh, he's as strong as a nut. Uh, 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 Batman, are you okay? Uh, I guess so, but... Nobody ever played uh, football with me like that before. Uh, 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 Robin, he's coming for you. Uh, Let go, you big man. Uh, Jimmy Donald. Uh, Batman, he's got me. Uh, uh, Robin. Robin, are you hurt? Uh, I'm okay. Uh, I guess. Christopher Columbus, he just wound up and threw me like a baseball. Come on, up on your feet. That a boy. Oh, he's running away. Come on, show him after him. Oh, look at him go. We'll never catch him. We've got to. Step on it. I'm practically off the ground now. Great, great Jupiter. What are you slowing up for? Stop. Look. Jeepers, he's up in the air. He's flying. Come on, Robin. I'm the double. Where to now? Back to the walkie-talkie. We've got to contact Superman and Lordville. The same way we contacted him before? Don't be funny. We've got to get him here in a hurry. He may still be able to catch that bruiser. I don't see how. Just leave it to him. Well, here's the doorway we were in. Where'd you put the walkie-talkie? Here it is. Well, get on it fast. Okay. Calling Superman. Calling Superman and Lordville. Come in, Superman. Come in. I hope he answers this time. Any luck? Not yet. Superman. Calling Superman. Batman and Robin calling Superman. Come in, please. Oh, why doesn't he answer? Maybe he's not there. Of course he's there. Try it again. Calling Superman. Calling Superman. Come in, Superman. Come in. No soap, huh? No soap. Okay. Let's go. Where to? We'll drive over to Lordville. Get in. Well, at least we learned something. We learned there is another Superman. Did we? Who else could throw us around like paper bags and then fly away? Well, we... I know what you're thinking, but you're wrong. And I'll prove it as soon as we get to Lordville. Hang on now. I'm going to make time. that sign, Robin? Yep. We're in Lordville. There's the bank. All right, brace yourself. Out we go. Huh. Looks as deserted around here as it was in Somerset. Well, it's almost two in the morning. Oh, now, where's Superman? I don't see him. He's probably around the side of the bank or in back. Come on. Wouldn't you think they'd have a watchman around here or a policeman? Oh, they rarely do in small towns like this, Robin. The constable makes the rounds every hour or so, if it isn't too cold out. I still don't see Superman. Honey, he must be around somewhere. Where? Superman! Hey, Superman! You see him? No, but if he's here, how come he doesn't see us? I don't know. Maybe he's behind the bank. I've got a feeling... Hey, wait, wait. Here's the end of the building. He's not back here. Hey, that's strange. Superman! Where are you? No answer. He's not here. I don't understand it. Something's wrong, Robin. Something's very wrong. Puzzled and confused, Batman and Robin stand at the rear of the bank building, peering into the darkness. What has happened to Superman? <coughs> Failing to find Superman at the bank he had presumably been guarding in the village of Lordville, Batman and Robin, unable to understand it, have returned to the deserted street in front of the darkened bank. Not a sign of him. How do you add this up, Batman? I can't make it add at all. Superman wouldn't leave a post he was got. Looking for somebody? What the... Superman. Well, what are you two doing here? Huh? Where have you been? Right here. Right Right here. here. Well, except for the last minute or two. I caught a glimpse of something up in the sky, something I couldn't make out, and I went up to investigate. You say the the last minute or two? Yes. 
See, there wasn't a sign of life for miles around, so I thought it was perfectly safe to have a look at whatever was up there. Funny thing, I lost it, though. Then I thought I saw it again, but I happened to look down and I saw you two, so down I came to find out what was wrong. Why did you leave Somerset? To get you. The other Superman showed up. What? That's right. At least we think it was another Superman. Of course it was. It had to be if, if Superman was right here all the time. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Tell me about this. Well, just after one o'clock. That's just a little less than an hour ago. Right. Uh-huh. Robin and I were in a doorway across from the Somerset Bank. I see. All of a sudden, a man in a blue costume and a red cape dropped out of the sky and landed in front of the bank. Out of the sky? That's right. He heard Robin calling you on the walkie-talkie and came for us. We tangled with him and got tossed around like a couple of beanbags. And then, well, then he ran away. Well, we started to chase him, but he leaped up into the air and he disappeared. Well, why didn't you call me? Well, I just told you. That's how we came to tangle with him. You see, he heard Robin trying to raise you. Oh, now, wait a minute. That's impossible. Nobody called me. Oh, no. I practically went horse calling you. What? When we first spotted a guy and then after he flew away. You say this was about one o'clock? Well, we'll call it one five. One five. Well, I was right here, and the walkie-talkie was on my back, just as it is now. Oh, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. What? Maybe it's out of order. Well, we can find out easily enough. All right, good idea. Ours in the back of the car. You stay where you are. Right. I'll pull you from the car. Okay. All right, come on, Robin. We'll move back a little more. Okay. That's better. All right, any time you're ready, Batman. I'm ready now. Go ahead, then. Calling Superman. Calling Superman. It works. Coming through? Yes. Well, then that means it works. Yes. That's exactly what it means. And since it does work, how could you have called me from Somerset without my hearing you? Unless... Unless... Once again, the same frightening thought passes through Superman's troubled mind. The horrible suspicion that somehow he himself is responsible for all that has been going on. That in this case he may have dozed off and in a state of stupor, flown to Somerset and attacked Batman and Robin. But then, why should he attack his friends? And why should he break into banks? Do you believe he's responsible? Frankly, we don't. Or do you believe there's another Superman? Another survivor of the planet Krypton? Never before has Superman been up against so baffling a problem as the one facing him now. Is it possible, as a result of the strange after effects of being bombarded with atomic energy, that he has been breaking into banks, stealing money, and then donating it to charity without realizing what he is doing? Or, as his friend Batman thinks, is there another Superman, another individual possessed of superhuman powers who has been committing the acts? In a desperate effort to solve the problem, Superman and Batman charted the course of the strange bank robberies and discovered that they followed a circular path through small towns in the vicinity of Metropolis. The next two towns on the arc of the circle were Lordville and Somerset. And while Superman set himself to watch the Lordville bank, Batman and Robin stationed themselves in Somerset. Late at night, a masked figure dropped out of the sky in Somerset, garbed in a blue costume and red cape. As Robin tried unsuccessfully to contact Superman by walkie-talkie radio... The man attacked our two friends, then leaped into the air and disappeared. Batman and Robin hurried to Lordville, where Superman said he had not received the SOS call on his walkie-talkie. The test, however, proved that the radio was in working order. And as we continue now, from the dark street in front of the Lordville bank, Superman says... Nothing wrong with the walkie-talkie, so why didn't I hear Robin calling me? You're sure you were here all the time? Every minute, Batman. Gosh, I can't figure it out. Neither can I, unless... Unless what? Unless you were asleep when we tried to call you. I wasn't. Well, how do you know? You said you've often dropped off to sleep without warning since you were exposed to that atomic energy. Well, yes, but I was Well, that's what must have happened tonight. Like the other evening in your apartment, when you dozed off in your chair and slept for several hours. Say, I'll bet that's what did happen. Oh, no, I don't think so, Say, Robert, wait a minute, I wait. I just thought of something. What? Before you fell asleep the other evening, you complained of a headache. Remember? Yes, yes, that's right. Do you have a headache tonight? Come to think of it, I did have one, but I would have known if I'd been asleep. Not necessarily. You might have been leaning against the bank or sitting down. Well, when you woke up, you were still in the same place, and you didn't know you'd been sleeping. I suppose that could be the answer. Well, I'm sure of it. But if it is, then I... I... 
You what? I must be the one who dropped out of the sky in Somerset an hour ago to rob the bank. Jeepers. You weren't. How do you know? I told you before. Even if you walked in your sleep... You mean flu? ...or had amnesia, you wouldn't do anything wrong. Well, if I didn't know what I was doing... Well, you still wouldn't do anything wrong. There's another Superman. I've said so from the beginning. Sorry, I can't believe it. Look, both of you. You saw whoever it was tonight. You were face-to-face with him. You must know if it was me or not. We weren't face-to-face with him very long. He threw us around like a couple of footballs. Yes, and he was wearing a mask. But I'm sure he wasn't you. But he was about my size and build. Yes. And he was wearing a costume just like mine. Yes. And he got away by leaping up into the air and disappearing. Yes, but I... Wait a minute, I forgot. His voice. Was it my voice? His voice? I don't seem to remember his voice. Oh, neither do I. Say, come to think of it, he didn't say a word. That's right. He just kind of grunted now and then. Oh. I can't believe it was you, Superman. Only... Of course, it does seem funny, Oh, no? stop it, Robin. If only I knew. I've got to know. Look, Jim, I've got an idea. What is it? Dr. Halper. He's chief at the Metropolis Hospital. He's a friend of mine. He's not only one of the greatest physicians in the world, but he worked with the atom bomb scientist on the after effects of radioactivity. Oh? Now, let's put the problem up to him. Nothing would suit me better. Fine. We'll go back to Metropolis right now. Oh, no, wait. We can't leave here till sunup. Why not? Well, just in case the other Superman might decide to take a crack at this bank. I still can't believe there is another I one. I know there is. Oh, oh, it's the town clock. Yeah. Well, let's get out of sight. Just in case our friend does show up. This way. Okay. Hiding in the dark shadows of the bank, our friends wait tensely but in vain. And when the first streaks of the rising sun lighten the sky above the sleeping village, they return to Metropolis. A short time later, in their guises of Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne... Superman and Batman are in the office of Dr. Alfred Halper, world-famous director of the Metropolis Hospital. Ah, just a moment, please, Bruce, and Mr. Kent. Are you trying to tell me that you believe Superman is this mysterious bank robber? Yes. No, which is it? That Kent has a crazy idea that he, uh, I mean Superman. Well, go ahead and tell Dr. Halper about it, Kent. Okay. I suppose you read about Superman's recent experience with the Atom Man, Doctor. Of course. Amazing thing. Not for Superman. Hmm. I shudder to think what might have happened to us all. But go on, go on. Well, a short while after that, Superman was trapped in a cyclotron where he was exposed to more atomic energy. I happen to know that since then he's been getting headaches and even dropping off to sleep at odd times. Yes. How do you know that? I, well, I, I know. Take my word for it. Now, it's my theory that during these, well, these sleeping spells, when he doesn't know what he's doing... He breaks into banks. And when he wakes up, he has no recollection of what he did. Oh, you're all wet. Now, I wait a minute, Bruce. Why do you say that, Mr. Kent? Well, because several people saw the man leap into the air and disappear. Only Superman can do that. And only he can bend solid steel bars and rip open heavy barred doors and vaults. Well, the other Superman can evidently do it, too. Well, I just don't believe there is another, Bruce. Oh, there must be. Just a moment, please. I don't know if Bruce's theory is correct, but I'm sure that yours is incorrect, Mr. Kent. Oh, why? For two reasons. In the first place, I don't believe that Superman could have these periods of forgetfulness which we call amnesia. Neither do I. But he was exposed to the terrible power of atomic energy, Doctor. Couldn't that have brought it on? Not with Superman. But even if it were possible, which I don't believe, he certainly wouldn't commit any criminal acts. There, there, you hear that, Kent? Yeah, yes, I hear it, but I'd like to know why Dr. Halper is so certain. Because Superman, as everyone knows, is thoroughly honest and upright. He fights for law and order. That's true, but such a person wouldn't commit a dishonest act, even if he'd been hypnotized. Now, that's a proven medical fact. But he gives all the stolen money to charity. Stealing is an antisocial act, a crime, regardless of what's done with the stolen goods. Robin Hood stole from the rich to help the poor, but he was still a thief. Isn't that right? Right. Of course. That's why I say Superman couldn't have done it. He works for the law and for society, not against it. Well, are you satisfied, Kent? Yes. Yes, and I'm relieved, too. (laughs) Imagine thinking Superman could turn bank robber. Why, it's enough to make you lose faith in all humanity. I can assure you it's impossible. That's wonderful. Hey, I... I don't know how to tell you how grateful I am, Doctor. I'm glad I could be of service. Incidentally, Bruce's theory that there may be another Superman is very interesting. Uh, We'll have more to tell you on that later. I hope. Well, uh, we've got to rush now. Many thanks, Doc. All right, come on, Kent. All right, thanks again, Dr. Halper. You're quite welcome. Goodbye. Goodbye. 
Well, you won't have to give yourself up to the police after all, Kent. Oh, it certainly takes a load off my mind, I must say. But somehow I just can't believe it. Oh, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Halper knows his stuff. And you said you did believe it. Oh, I believe I'm not the bank robber, Bruce. Well, then what? I just can't believe there's another Superman. Oh, you're being stubborn. Kent. No, I'm not. It's just... Only Superman could do the things this fellow's been doing. I realize it looks that way, but... Hey, wait, I'll open the door. Oh, thanks. Uh, what did you start to say? Well, if there is another Superman, why haven't we heard of him before? Where's he been all these years? I've been wondering about that, too. But we'll find out when we catch him. Something strange about this. Very strange. Bruce, did you hear that? Yes. Come on, I want to see that paper. Breaking into a run, Clark, Kent, and Bruce Wayne make for the newsboy who is shouting that the mysterious bank robber has been identified. Who is he? As they left the Metropolis Hospital, Clark, Kent, and Bruce Wayne, who was really the famous Batman, heard a newsboy shouting that the mysterious bank robber had been identified. As we continue now, Kent has purchased a paper, and he and Wayne have moved away from the excited crowd around the newsboy. Who is it, Kent? Listen to this, Bruce. A mysterious bank robber who has been terrorizing communities in the vicinity of Metropolis by his superhuman feats of strength and his ability to fly has at last been identified by Inspector William Henderson of the Metropolis Police Department. Oh, never mind. Oh, that can't go on. All right, wait a minute. Let's see. Here. Early this morning, Henderson summoned reporters to his office and announced that he had just discovered evidence which identified the bank burglar. Henderson said that he was shocked to have to reveal that the thief is... is... is who can't? Is who? Superman. Speechless, Bruce Wayne snatches the paper from Clark Kent's hands and reads Inspector Henderson's startling statement again. A statement to the effect that newly discovered evidence has proven that the amazing bank robber is Superman, the Man of Steel. How can this be after what Dr. Halpert has just said? And what is this new evidence? Just as Clark Kent became convinced that it was not he in his role of Superman who had broken into several banks, ripped open steel vaults, and then donated the stolen money to charity, he was dealt a staggering blow. He and his friend Batman heard a newsboy shouting that the mysterious bank robber had been identified. Purchasing a paper, Kent read that police inspector Henderson had discovered evidence which proved that Superman was guilty. As we continue now... Kent and Batman, in his guise of Bruce Wayne, have hurried to the office of Inspector Henderson at Metropolis Police Headquarters. As we join them there, Henderson is speaking. I'm sorry, Kent, but I can't tell you what the evidence is yet. Why not? I'm getting one more opinion on it. I expect a report any minute, and then I'll issue a statement to the press. But according to the extras on the street, you're already convinced that Superman is the bank robber. That's right. But this is so, well, so incredible that... I decided to have the evidence verified once more before I obtain warrants for his arrest. Arrest Superman? Why, you're out of your mind, Inspector. Now, hold on, Wayne. Superman, a thief? Why, of all the ridiculous nonsense I ever heard, well, you ought to know it's impossible. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Why, Wait, Superman's Bruce. done more to combat crime than any other man in the world. He's always been on the side of law and order. I know it. You know it. But you go on record as calling him a criminal, oh, a look. bank robber. And I used to think you had brains. Now, you listen to me, Wayne. Wait a minute, you We've two. been friends for a long time, but you can't talk to me like that. Well, I'm sorry, Inspector. I know what a shock this is to you, but it was just as great a shock to me. Even with the proof in my hands, I had a hard time making myself believe that Superman had turned crooked. He didn't, Inspector. Of course he didn't. I say he did. And I've got the evidence to prove it. What, what do you mean? I'll produce it when I'm ready. Why can't you produce it now? I'll promise not to publish a word of it until you give me permission. I said I'll produce it when I'm ready and not a moment before. But... And it won't do you any good to try to crowd me. That's the trouble with both of you. You think that... Come in. Oh, what is it, Burton? I've got the report from McCann, Inspector. Oh, good. That's what I've been waiting for. Let's have it. Yes, sir. Here it is. Is this the report on the evidence you mentioned, Inspector? Yes. Yeah. Uh, let's see what he says. Oh, that's all, Burton. Yes, sir. Well? Now, take it easy, Wayne. Hmm, just as I thought. McCann backs us up. Who's McCann? Backs you up on what? Look, you fellows have been helpful to the police department on more than one occasion. I'm going to take you into my confidence on one condition. What's that? That you don't print a word of this before I release it to all the papers. I'd have them on my neck if you did. I promise. And you're to keep it under your hat, too, Wayne. Check. Okay. 
take a look at this card first. All right, let's see it. Uh-oh. Now, it says, uh, a gift from the Lynn Haven National Bank with the compliments of a friend. Say, we saw this before, can't remember? Yes, at the War Orphans Relief Society. It came with a package of money stolen from the Lynn Haven Bank. Right. And there are four other cards like this in the same handwriting. Just the names of the banks are different. Yes, we know. They were received at various charity offices with the stolen money. Right. And all four cards were obviously written by the bank robber. Well, they might not have been. They came with the stolen money, didn't they? Yes, Well, but... that's enough for me. Now, here. Take a look at this. What is it? Oh, I know. It's a piece of note paper with some writing on it. Yeah, let me see it. Compliments and best wishes to Jimmy Olson from... From... Go on, read the signature, Wayne. Oh, it's signed... Superman. Yes, you bet it is. Superman gave Jim Olson that autograph some time ago. I was looking around the Daily Planet today. I knew they had some kind of unofficial contact with Superman. And I found this piece of paper hanging over Olson's desk. Now, compare Superman's handwriting with the handwriting on the cards that came with the stolen money. Why, um, uh, um, uh, they look pretty similar. Pretty similar? But exactly alike. Same man wrote them. And that man is Superman. You're wrong, Inspector. Look at it, Kent. Look at I it. I don't have to. I know Superman wrote the autograph for Jim, but I also know he didn't write those cards. Oh, he didn't, eh? No. Well, listen to this. Joe Reiser, the police handwriting expert, says Superman did write the oh, cards. Well, you can... And George McCann, another expert we call in sometimes, says the same thing. So what? We could call in a dozen experts, and half of them would probably say he didn't write it. Sure. I've seen plenty of cases where handwriting experts disagree. My two experts agree. That's enough for my purposes. Besides, you don't have to be an expert to see that the same man wrote the autograph and the card. Well, it may look that way, but you're wrong, Inspector. Of course you are. How could you possibly believe that Superman would rob banks? Oh, let's not go into that again. I've asked myself the same question a thousand times. I don't know the answer. He's been giving the stolen money to charity. Maybe he's got a... Oh, some kind of a Robin Hood complex or something. Oh, nonsense. Okay, Wayne, how do you account for the fact that Superman's handwriting matches the writing on the card? Well, I don't know, And but who I... else but Superman could rip open steel doors and vaults and then leap up into the air and disappear? Oh, that's easy. Another Superman. Oh, so now there's another Superman. Where's he been all these years? Sitting home, crocheting doilies? Well, I'll admit I don't know that either, but I can tell but you... But nothing. There's only one answer. And hard as it is to take, we've got to swallow it. I'm going to call in the reporters now and tell them. No, no, wait, Inspector. Burton, send in the re... I'm sorry, Inspector, but you've got to listen to me. Well, of all... What do you mean, shutting off my intercom phone, Kent? I'm terribly sorry, I'll but you... I'll to throw you in the jug. Turn it on again. If you'll just listen I to won't me... listen. This isn't the first time you've tried to tell me how to run the police department. I'm not trying to... I'm fed up, you hear me? Now, turn on that intercom phone, or so help Inspector, me Inspector, I... please, you want to get the man who's really been robbing these banks, don't you? I intend to get him. Heaven knows I wish it didn't have to be this way, but since it, it is... It isn't. And if you'll just give me a little time, I'll prove it. You'll prove what? That Superman is not the thief. How are you going to prove it? Well, I've got a plan. But if you let this so-called handwriting evidence get out, my plan will be ruined. What plan? I can't tell you now, but if you'll just trust me, I'll bring you the guilty man. Sorry, Kent. From where I sit, I've got indisputable evidence that Superman is guilty. But I've got to proceed against him. I thought in this country a man was considered innocent until he was judged guilty by a jury of his peers. You seem to be proceeding just the other way. That's what I was going to say. I said that from where I sit, he's guilty, and it's my duty to arrest him. Oh. Then he'll get a fair trial. And how do you expect to arrest him? Yes. Do you know where he is? I'll admit it's going to be a job to find and arrest him, especially if he resists arrest. But I'll do the best I can. Now, if you'll take your hand off the intercom phone, Kent, I'll call in the reporter. Wait, Inspector. Now, wait a minute. I've got a bargain to offer you. I'm not buying any bargains for the last time, I think Kent. you'll buy this one. Now, listen. If I don't produce the guilty man in 48 hours... I can't withhold the evidence that long. All right, all right. Make it 24 hours. I'll either bring you the real thief then, or I'll produce Superman. Wait a minute, Kent. Do you know what you're saying? I know, I know. Well... How about it, Inspector? How can you guarantee to produce Superman? I'm quite sure I can. I never let you down on anything I promised before, did I? No, but... Then trust me this one more time. What can you lose? Kent's right, Inspector. It'll take a lot longer than that for you to find Superman. If you find him. Well, I suppose I can wait 24 hours. Now you're talking. Thanks a lot. You won't regret this. I'd better not, Kent, or I'll have your hide. Listen, if I fail, you can have it. And Superman's. 
Come on, Bruce. So long, Inspector. All right, Kent. Be seeing you, Inspector. So long. Now, listen, Burton. Tell the reporters I won't have a statement on the evidence I mentioned for 24 hours. Followed by the puzzled Bruce Wayne, Clark Kent hurries from Inspector Henderson's office. How does Kent intend to fulfill his promise to produce the mysterious bank thief within 24 hours? Hurrying from police headquarters, Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne, who in reality is the famous Batman, hailed a taxi. Kent gave the driver a street number, then settled back. <sighs> well, that's that. That's what? All you did was stick your neck out, Mr. Kent, promising Henderson to produce the real bank robber within 24 hours or, or else surrender Superman. Y yourself? I know, I know, but I had to, Bruce. If the papers published the handwriting evidence and the public believed Superman was guilty, my plan would be ruined. What do you mean? Look, I'm convinced those bank robberies are part of a gigantic plot against me. I don't get it. Well, I admit it's a little too vague in my own mind yet to explain, but I think I'm beginning to get the drift of it. And if my plan works, we'll catch our man tonight. Well, tell me how. We're going to set a trap, Bruce, and hope that he walks or flies into it. If he doesn't... Well, we're licked. And tomorrow, by this time, I'll be behind bars. And, and Superman's career will be over. Grimly, Clark Kent reminds Bruce Wayne of the bargain he made with Inspector Henderson. To prove that he, Superman, is not guilty of the bank robberies. Or else, surrender himself to the police. Will his desperate last-minute plan succeed... In a desperate effort to persuade Inspector Henderson not to release evidence which the police chief says proves that Superman is the mysterious burglar who has been breaking into banks, stealing money, and then donating it to charity, Clark Kent made a daring bargain with the inspector. Within 24 hours, he promised, he would either bring in the real thief or produce Superman himself. Kent then outlined his plan to his friend, Batman. The bank robberies had followed a circular path within a 50-mile radius of Metropolis. And only the banks in two towns, Lordville and Somerset, had not been broken into by the mysterious burglar. Hosting private detective Candy Myers and his men in Somerset, Kent and his true identity of Superman accompanied Batman and Robin, his young companion, to Lordville. As we continue now, late at night, our three friends are hidden in the dark shadows of the small brick bank building. The little village is wrapped in sleep, and a cloudy sky shrouds the pale moon. Robin, nervous, breaks the tense silence. This bank robber's gonna show up. I wish he'd make it soon, Batman. I'm getting cold. Relax, Robin. Anybody know what time it is, Superman? I think I can see the town clock from here. Wait a minute. Yes, it's just 20 minutes past 12. Yeah, we might have a long wait then. He didn't show up in the last job he tried to pull until after one. Most of the other robberies took place around midnight. Keep your eyes peeled. We might see him at any minute. The sooner the better. I owe him something for the shellacking he gave us last night. If he does appear, Robin, leave him to me. No, sir. Nobody can use me for a football and get away with it. You heard Superman, Robin. He's giving the orders tonight. Okay, hold but... It, hold it, Someone's coming. Huh? Where? Up the street. Yes, I hear footsteps. So do I. Who is it, Superman? Town constable making his rounds. Oh, that's right. Our bird doesn't walk, he flies. I should have thought of that. He's another Superman. Quiet. Right in front of the bank. What? Who? The constable. Trying the door. Oh. Quiet. He spots us. He'll have the whole town up in arms. Okay. He's leaving. After all those robberies around here, you think they'll keep a guard at the bank all night? They never do in small towns like this. I guess they figure the constable can handle any trouble that comes up. Uh, fat chance it'd have against a superman. Fat chance a guard would have, too. Well, that's true, but... What's that? Relax, Jim, relax. Just the town clock striking the half hour. Hey, Batman. Wasn't Candy Myers supposed to check with us from Somerset between 12 and 12.30 on the walkie-talkie? Say, that's right, he was. Jeepers, you suppose the bank robber showed up there? I hope not. He was there last night and you two scared him away. I don't think he'll try Somerset again. But we'd better check. You got the walkie-talkie on your back, Robin. Contact Candy, will you? Okay. Calling Candy... Not so loud. Oh, I'm sorry. Calling Candy Myers in Somerset. Lordville calling Candy Myers in Somerset. Come in, Candy. Doesn't he answer? No. Try again. Calling Candy Myers. Calling Candy Myers in Somerset. Come in, please. Come in. Still no answer, right? No. 
I don't like this. I'd better hop over to Somerset and see what's wrong. You two stay here. I'll wait, 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 hold it. What? Robin, I'm ashamed of you. Huh? And I always thought you were bright. What's the matter? Yeah, what did I do now? You opened the receiving key on the walkie-talkie instead of the sending key. What? No wonder Candy couldn't hear him. Uh-oh. Oh, gosh, did I? You certainly did. Here, here, let me have it. Isn't the sending key on the right? No, Robin, it's on the left. Oh, gosh, the first walkie-talkie we used a couple of years no ago. No alibis. I... Okay, I've got it. You must have opened the wrong key last night, too, Robin. When the bank robber showed up in Somerset and you tried to call me. That's why I didn't get your SOS. Of course. Not for that, would have had our man behind bars by this time. Where's that extra special dunce cap and will someone give me a good hard kick? Forget it. We all make mistakes. See if you can raise candy, Batman. Right. Calling Candy Myers in Somerset. Lordville calling Candy Myers. Come in, please. Still no answer, eh? I'd better get over. There he is. I was just going to call you. How is it over there? All quiet so far, Candy. How is it with you? All I need is a lily in my hand, and I'd think I was out of this world. I never saw such a graveyard. Everybody in this bird goes to sleep at 8 o'clock. <laughs> Tell him not to fall asleep. Keep your eyes peeled, Candy, just in case. Don't worry, pal. I've got every inch of this place covered. If the guy does show up here, he won't know what hit him. Call us at once if you see him, Candy. That's all. We'll buzz you later. So long. Okay, Robin. We'll strap it on your back again. Yeah. And remember, the sending key is on the left. How could I forget? Well, all's quiet on the western front. Yes, it's too quiet to suit me. I counted on our bird showing up tonight. If he doesn't, I guess I'll have to surrender myself to Inspector Henderson tomorrow. Oh, that deal you made, I mean, um, Clark Kent made with Henderson was a big mistake. Ah, oh, Henderson's way off the beam. He ought to know you wouldn't rob banks. Well, he's got some strong evidence against me, Robin. Evidence, Pooh. Why should you break into banks? Wait a minute. Look, what? where? Up in the sky. Floating across the face of the moon. See it? I don't see anything. Neither do I. It's right over. No, wait a minute. It's gone now. That's queer. What is it? What did you see? The same thing I thought I saw last night before you two got here. Something strangely shaped. I went up to investigate, but then I saw you driving like mad from Somerset, and I came down to find out what was wrong. I remember you mentioned it. Oh, it's probably a plane. No, no, no. It's not a plane. It... Oh, wait. There it is again. Where? I can't see a thing. It's behind the clouds. Hard to tell from here, but I'd say it was about six or seven feet long and a foot or so thick. About the size of a big man. What? Say, maybe it's the bank robber. The other Superman. Jeepers. I don't know. It's quite high up and hard to see, but when it comes out from behind the clouds again, I think I'll shoot up there. How about taking me along? Uh-uh. Oh, uh, sir, if it is another Superman, I'll want both my arms free. Huh. Now, it's coming out. Okay, here I go. Good luck, Superman. Yeah, good luck. Up and away! <laughs> Leaping from the dark street, the Man of Steel rockets off into the cloudy heavens, leaving Batman and Robin staring after him anxiously. What has Superman seen? Sighting a strange, swiftly moving object in the cloudy night sky high above the village of Lordville... Superman streaked away to investigate it. He has been gone for some time now. And on the deserted street in front of the village bank, Batman is beginning to worry. It's strange he isn't back yet, Robin. Give him a chance. Oh, I hope he didn't run into any trouble. He can take care of himself. I know, but... But what? Suppose it is the other Superman up there. Our man will wrap him up like a bundle of dirty wash. Uh, maybe. What do you mean, Maybe. Superman is the strongest guy in the world. You've forgotten the steel doors that were ripped off their hinges and the iron bars that were twisted like pretzels. He may be just as strong as Superman, perhaps even stronger. Yeah, I guess he could be at that. Oh, jeepers, now you've got me worried. How long has it been since Superman left? Oh, about 10 or 15 minutes. Oh, it's longer than that, Robin. We talked to Candy Myers at 1230. Superman spotted that thing in the sky just a minute or two after we signed off with Candy. Uh, what time is it now? Search me. I left my watch back in the house. And I broke mine last night. Well, I should say it's about... One o'clock. Good Lord. Wait. Oh, that means he's gone almost half an hour. Oh, golly. What do you think has happened up there? I don't have to think. I know. What? It's just as I suspected all along. There is another Superman. And right now, Robin, both of them are up there battling. Wouldn't we see them or hear them? Oh, they may be miles up. Oh, Robin, I'm afraid this is the payoff. Don't worry. If it is, our man will win. I hope you're right. 
I mean, I feel a lot better. What was that? I don't know. Duck back in the shadow of the building. Maybe it's Superman. We'll know in a second. He's coming toward the bank. A few more steps and we'll be under that street lamp. Don't move, Robin. Batman, look. It's Superman. Hold it, Robin. But... It's the wrong one. He's wearing a mask. It's a bank robber. Yes. And you know what that means? Our man didn't win. Our Superman lost. Step by step, the tall, broad-shouldered masked figure, wearing the familiar blue costume and red cape with a large S emblazoned on his chest, approaches the bank building where Batman and Robin crouch in the shadows, stunned at the realization that the Superman they have always known and admired has at last met his match. Or has he? What did occur in the cloud-swept sky high above the earth? Was there a titanic battle between two superhuman beings? And did the wrong one emerge the victor? A, my a mysterious bank robber, apparently possessed of superhuman strength and the ability to fly, is believed by the police to be none other than Superman. The famous Batman, however, is convinced it is another Superman, a counterpart of the Man of Steel. Having reason to suspect that the bank in the village of Lordville would be next visited by the strange burglar, Superman, Batman, and Robin decided to keep an all-night vigil at the bank. However, shortly after midnight... The Man of Steel sighted a strange moving object high in the dark, clouded sky, which vaguely resembled the figure of a man, and he streaked aloft to investigate. When a half hour passed and he did not return, Batman and Robin became alarmed, believing the two supermen had met in mortal combat high above the clouds. Suddenly they heard a thud, as of a large man dropping to earth, and peering out from the shadows alongside the bank, they saw a tall, powerfully built man wearing a blue costume and red cape pass under a streetlight as he approached the bank. Batman, look! It's Superman! Hold it, Robin. What? The wrong one. He's wearing a mask. A bank robber? Yes. And you know what that means? Our man didn't win. Our Superman lost. Jeepers. Get back out of sight, Robin. What? Get back, I said. Now, crouch down. Maybe he won't see us. Sure he will. He can see through brick walls. He may not notice us. Keep low. He stopped. He's right in front of the bank. Think he's going to break in? I don't have to think. I know. Well, then, then what are we going to do? There's nothing we can do yet. But we can't just sit here and we let him... We show ourselves we're finished. This fellow must have just licked Superman. Golly. Batman. I hear. Sounds like he's ripping the bank door open. Aren't we going to do something? We'll have to wait until he gets inside. And then go for the police? What police? There's only a constable in this village, and who knows where he is. Oh, what a sweet kettle of fish. Wait, I've got the walkie-talkie. I can call Candy Myers in Somerset. Somerset's 25 miles away. But Candy can contact the state police. By the time they get here, it'll be all over but the shouting. Well, there's only one thing to do. Come on. Where? I'll give you three guesses. I only need one. We tackle him, huh? You win the brass ring. Now, get that walkie-talkie off your back. I'll like just look around the corner of the building and see what he is. Okay. Is he still out there? No. He's inside. Come on. Look, Pappy, you knew we were going to tangle with him. Why did we wait until he broke into the bank? Too right out here. We wouldn't have a chance. But inside, where it's dark. I get it. Hold it. Shapers. Look what he did to this door. Solid steel, six inches thick. And he ripped it off its hinges like it was cardboard. We're not making a mistake tangling with him, are we? I wouldn't be a bit surprised. Ready? Anytime you are. Let's go, then. Make like a mouse. And watch it. Don't trip over anything. Check. Thank heaven for these soft shoes. You can say that again. Where is he, Batman? I don't know. It's pretty dark in here. Like the inside of a motorman's glove. You'll get used to it in a minute. Hold it. See him? No. Thought maybe I could hear him. I don't hear a thing except my heart thumping. Listen, can a, a, a Superman see in the dark? A lot better than we can. That's fine. This guy might be standing right in front of us, waiting for us to walk into his arms. If he is, we'll find out soon enough. Come on. I think what he did to that steel Never door... mind that. Get your rope ready. Okay. Hey, no. Robin, what happened? Just bumped into something. One of the teller's cages, I guess. Don't move. Chances are he heard that. I'm a clumsy idiot. Quiet. Hear that, Robin? 
Yeah. Sounds like he's ripping off another door. Must be the vault. Where is the vault? The sound, I say, straight ahead and below us. Come on. What do you mean, below us? Well, some banks have the vault in the basement below the main floor. Well, there should be a staircase somewhere around here. Uh, yes, yes, I see it. Where? See? Well, that little patch of light comes in from the window. Uh-huh. Now, careful now. Our only chance is to take him by surprise. You mean we've got a chance? You heard me. Against the guy who licked Superman? You heard me again. I just wanted to make sure. Quiet. Here's the stairs. Oh. There he is. See that beam of light? What is it? Just flash. He's in the vault at the foot of the stairs. See? He's got his back to us. He's counting money, isn't he? Right. Now listen. It's only eight steps down. We'll take a step or two, then jump him. Maybe we ought to take out life insurance policy Don't first. be so flipped. Now listen. I'll tackle him. You get your rope around his legs. You want me to brand him, too? Leave that for Inspector Henderson. Ready? Ready as I'll ever be. Now, we've got to hold him somehow, Robin. Quiet now. Down two steps. Okay. Up and at him. Get your rope around his legs, Robin. Hurry up. Hold him. Okay. Hurry up. I've hit him a dozen times on the string. I can't get the rope around him either. Look out, Batman. He's good going against the wall. Look out. Batman. Batman. You hurt Batman, you big ace. Get out of my way. Get out of the way, I said. No, you don't. Hey, let go of me. Let go, I said. Batman. 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 Oh, Batman. Oh. Batman. Wake up, Batman. Oh. Wake up. Oh. Batman. Oh, what? Oh. Snap out of it. Come on, now. Oh, my head. All right, snap out of it, Batman. What happened here? I... Superman. Yes, what happened here? Where'd you come from? We thought... Never mind that now. What happened oh. here? Help me up. Sure thing. Wait. Take it oh. easy. Whoa, now, wait a minute. You're oh. a little wobbly there. Oh, thanks. Hold it now. Take it easy. Yeah. Right. Oh, that threw me up against the vault head first. Oh. Knocked me out. Who did? The other... Hey, hey, where's Robin? Robin? I was just going to ask you that. Who turned the lights on down here? I did. Robin! Robin, where are you? He's not here. Nobody's in the bank. Except you and me. Great Hubert. That... Then he got away and... And he took Robin with him. Returning to the little bank in Lordville, Superman found Batman alone in the vault room, just regaining consciousness. But Robin and their huge costumed opponent were gone. Then... Then he got away. And he took Robin with him. Who got away? The other Superman. There is no other Superman. There is, I tell you. He broke into the bank tonight after you left. Robin and I tangled with him. You didn't tangle with a Superman. Come along outside with me and I'll prove it to you. Here. Up these stairs. I tell you, we saw him. We battled with him. I know, I know. He was wearing a blue costume and a red cape. It was another Superman, all right. Sorry, but you're wrong. Look, I was dizzy for a moment, but... And then when I came to, I, I can tell you, I, I'm not dizzy now. I know what I'm talking about. You only think you do, but you're wrong. I'm not wrong. This fellow dropped out of the sky. Oh, no, he didn't. I tell you, he did. Robin and I saw him do it last night in Somerset. And we we heard him tonight. Yeah, that may be, but he didn't drop out of the sky. And he didn't fly off either. You'll see what I mean in just a moment. Here, right outside here. There. There. Take a look at that, Batman. Good Lord, what is it? What does it look like? Well, it's a... It's a basket. It could be the gondola of a dirigible or a... Dirigible is right. A miniature dirigible. Look, here's the gas bag. I deflated it before I brought it down. What? You mean that's what you saw up in the sky? That's right. The bag and gondola are cleverly camouflaged. That's why I had difficulty spotting it. Take a look at this motor-driven winch and this long rope ladder. That's how our bank robber appeared to leap up into the air and disappear. He caught the rope ladder... And was hauled up to the dirigible by the winch. Right. But where's the pilot? Well, he must have seen me coming for him because he bailed out before I could reach him. I saw his chute start to open, so I went after the dirigible, figuring to pick the pilot up later. But his parachute failed, and he crashed on a mountainside before I could save him. So, there isn't another Superman. No. Then who was the fellow we mixed with? Well, I don't know, but right now that's not important. We seem to have forgotten something. Robin. Oh, Lord, he's got him. 
That, that big bruiser's got him. Now, take it easy. Take it easy. Do you know what that kid means to me? He, he's everything. And now he's gone and... I may never see him alive again. Never. Stunned by the sudden realization that Robin has little or no chance of survival in the hands of the mysterious creature who affects the costume of Superman and can seemingly rip steel doors from their hinges with his bare hands, Batman is grief-stricken. But unknown to him, Robin was not carried away by the false Superman. In fact, at this very moment, the courageous youngster is trailing the massive red-caped giants through the woods in the hope of being led to his hideout. When Superman captured a miniature dirigible floating high above the Lordville Bank, part of the mystery of the superhuman bank burglar was solved. With Batman, he examined the gondola of the dirigible and found a motor-operated winch and a rope ladder. It was obvious then that the red-caped, blue-costumed burglar had created the illusion of flying by clinging to the trailing ladder and being swooped up into the air. But who was he? And more important, what had he done with Robin, Batman's young assistant, last seen battling for his life in the bank? As we continue now, it is early the following morning. All through the night, Superman and Batman searched the woods around Lordville, but found no trace of Robin. Now, in their guises of Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne, tired and worn, we find them with Inspector Henderson at police headquarters. Wayne, his eyes red-rimmed and his cheeks etched with deep lines of fatigue, makes one final impassioned plea. Listen. Inspector, you've got to find that boy. You've got to move heaven and earth to find him. I'm doing all I can, Wayne. Oh, that's not enough. You've got to do more than you can. You've got to... Boy. I'm sorry. What am I saying? Easy, Bruce. Kent, you you know what I mean. Yes. You understand. Of course I do, and so does the inspector. The kid means everything to me. Sure, sure, we know. Oh, you don't know, really. Yes, we do. Well, you can't know how I feel about him. But believe me, if, if anything's happened to Robert... If, all right, if he... now don't say it. Because I promise you it's not true. Nothing's happened to Robin. He can take care of himself. Uh, would you mind my asking a question? Oh, go ahead, Inspector. Sorry. I thought the boy's name was Dick Grayson. Why do you two keep calling him Robin? Oh, I... Uh, Robin's just a, a nickname for him. Th that's right, isn't it, Bruce? Yes. I see. Well, let's go back to this case. Tell me your reason again, Kent, for not wanting the story of the dirigible released to the press. Well, I don't want whoever's behind this false Superman to know we have the answer. Let them go on thinking we believe the real Superman is responsible. What will that accomplish? Two things, Inspector. It may put them off guard, at least temporarily, and it won't stop them from going ahead with their plan. What plan? The plan I think they have in mind. Oh, you think? Oh, has there been anything wrong with my thinking up to now, Inspector? What about your boast to bring in the phony a real Superman within 24 hours? That still goes. But 24 hours have not elapsed yet, have they? Well, I must admit... That's enough for you to admit anything is a victory. Right, Bruce? What? Uh... Uh, were you talking to me? Oh, now, snap out of it, Bruce. The world hasn't come to an end. We'll find the boy all right. I'm beginning to wonder. Oh, nonsense. Now, what about that plan, Kent? We've got to move fast in this case. Well, the way I figure, all these petty bank burglaries with the stolen money sent to various charities is simply a cleverly devised plot to discredit me. Discredit you? What have you got to uh, do? Uh, I mean, uh, Superman. I... <laughs> I'm so tired, I'm beginning to think I'm Superman. It's funny, isn't it? Very funny. Go ahead. Well, once they accomplish that and have everyone, including the police, believing that Superman has turned bank burglar, I think they plan to pull a really big job and hang in on Superman. Sounds a little fantastic to me. Yeah, maybe, but I can't see any other way of figuring it. Uh, do you go along with Kent's idea, Wayne? Kent's idea? Didn't you just hear it? Oh, I'm sorry, Inspector. I wasn't listening. Now, look, Bruce. I know, we... I know. Snap out of it. Get hold of yourself. Pull yourself together. Chin up and stop worrying. Well, but sure. But what if I can't? What if I just stand here watching that phone and waiting to hear it ring and hoping like I never hoped before that it'll be a call about Robin, about us being all right? Is that criminal? Oh, of course not, but... Oh, got... There it is. Easy, son. Anderson speaking. Yes, Malloy. You checked all of them? I see. Uh -huh. What about the Grayson kid? I see. All right, call me back. Right. Any, any news, Inspector? Sorry, Wayne. Nothing. It's only 9 o'clock, Bruce. Only 9 o'clock? Only eight hours since he's been missing. That's nothing. Nothing at all, is it? Just time enough for him to take a stroll in the woods. Now you're really going overboard. Oh, I'm sorry. About this big job, you think they plan to pull Kent after they build up suspicion against Superman? Yes. What do you mean by a big job? Oh, I mean something huge, something tremendous. No piddling $20,000 robbery. A really big one. And unless I miss my guess, it's coming soon. Where? When? <laughs> If I could answer those questions, Inspector, I wouldn't be here now. I'd be telling fortunes at county fairs. There's no time for jokes, Kent. If you really think they're planning a big robbery, I'd like to alert the entire force. Well, that's fine, but it may not occur in Metropolis. 
may happen in Chicago or Detroit or Los Angeles. Uh-huh. And you think the same guy, the one who broke into the banks, is going to pull it? Uh-huh. As Superman. You mean dressed as Superman? Well, naturally. Well, come to think of it, the guy must have some sort of superhuman strength. You saw those vault doors he ripped off? Yes, but I don't think that's a matter of strength. Now, now wait a minute. My men checked. I know. Your men checked for nitroglycerin, diamond drills, burglary tools, etc., etc., etc. And they found nothing. Those doors were ripped off by hand. I doubt it, Inspector. And so, incidentally, does Caddy Myers. Now, what's that private gumshoe got to do with this case? He was guarding the Somerset Bank for us last night. And this morning, I asked him to hop over to Lordville and take a look at the damage. As a matter of fact, I told him we'd meet him there at 9.30. We better get going, Bruce. Going? To where? To Lordville. Do you remember we told Candy we'd meet him there? I think I'll stick around, Candy. Oh, no. There, there, there might be a call. Now, go ahead, Wayne. There is, I'll contact you in Lordville. Sure. There's nothing quite so bad as waiting for something to happen. So you're good to drive over to Lordville. Come on. Okay. See you later, Inspector. Right. Oh, wait a minute. Yes? I forgot something. What? That call I got a few minutes ago was about the dirigible. Oh, yes. What about it? The thing had a flying range of 300 miles. Every airport within 300 miles of Lordville was checked. Nobody ever saw it. Uh-huh. I didn't think you'd turn up anything on that. They probably kept it in some old barn. Well, I'll be seeing you. Right. So long, Wayne. So long. Let's go, Bruce. Leaving police headquarters, Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne drive to Lordville, where they join private detective Candy Myers. The heavy steel door of the bank, which had been seemingly ripped from its hinges by the mysterious bank robber the previous night, is now leaning against the wall. Kent questions Candy about it. Anything turn up, Candy? Not a thing. The state cops checked all the fingerprints on the vault door. They all matched the bank employees. Our bird must have worn gloves. How we ever ripped the doors off, I don't know. Now, what about that faint odor I mentioned? Uh, What was that, Kent? Well, last night I thought I caught a peculiar odor when I entered the bank after the burglary. It was almost bitter, like burned coffee. I've been smelling all over the place. No soap. Well, I may have been wrong, but it just struck me. Take a look at this door, Bruce. Look at the way the hinges are... Hey, what's that? Calling what? Candy Myers. A voice calling my name. Yes, I heard it too. Calling Candy Myers. Come in. That's Candy. Robin's voice. Where is he? The walkie-talkie in Candy's car. Come on. All right. Calling Candy. Oh, Myers. Was all right. Ernie. Hurry. Come in, Candy. Come in. Let me have it, Ted. Quickly. Okay, here. Hello, Robin. Robin, this is Bruce. Come in. Oh boy, am I glad to hear your voice. Where are you? I trailed the big guy here, the other Superman. What? Wait, I said Never I. Never mind that. Where are you? I'm about. Oh, I think they spotted me again. I trailed the guy to their hideout, and they saw me. I got away, but they're looking for me now. Robin, in the name of heaven, where are you? About a mile south of Highway 17A. I can hear them coming through the grass. What town are you near, Robin? Right above the town of... Robin! Robin! Those were shots. I know. Robin, answer me. Robin, come in. Robin! Robin, what happened? Frantically, Bruce Wayne, alias Batman, yells into the receiver of his walkie-talkie in a vain effort to again raise Robin. What were the shots that knifed through the sensitive instrument? We continue now. Clark Kent, in his role of Superman, carrying Batman as extra cargo, is streaking above Highway 17A. For almost an hour, they have been searching south of the cement road in the vain hope of locating Robin. But by now, Batman has given up. Oh, it's useless, Superman. We'll never find him. We've been over this ground a dozen times. I'm not looking for Robin anymore. I'm looking for some sign of activity in the tall grass down there. Robin mentioned something about someone sneaking through the grass, didn't he? Yes, but I... Look, look at that. What is it? Down, down. I don't see anything. Look, look. In the grass. Oh, it's a walkie-talkie. Hey, it's Robin's. But... Oh, what are these holes in it? Do... Do you think that... Yes, Wayne. They're bullet holes. Quietly, Superman identifies the five or six holes in the small radio instrument. There is no need for further explanation. Almost tenderly, Batman's fingers caress the box as his eyes grow moist and something catches in his throat. To him, this looks like the end of the trail. Although Superman now knows that the mysterious bank robber who wears a costume similar to his own and is apparently possessed of amazing strength, is not another superhuman creature, but only an impersonator of the Man of Steel, his problem is far from over. Because Robin, young companion of the famous Batman, has disappeared. In the village of Lordville, where Robin was last seen during a fight with the mysterious burglar, Superman and Batman received a message from the boy on a walkie-talkie radio. Robin said he had trailed the bank robber to a hideout and had then been discovered and pursued. He only had time to say that he was somewhere south of State Highway 17A, 
when a fusillade of shots was heard, and the radio went dead. Carrying Batman, Superman scoured the countryside in the vicinity of the highway, and finally discovered Robin's walkie-talkie in the deep grass of a deserted field. The portable radio was riddled with bullet holes. Now, holding the black box in his trembling hands, Batman looks at it in dazed bewilderment. Robin. Robin must have been shot. Oh, we're not sure, Batman. He must have been. Look, this... This walkie-talkie is full of bullet holes. I know it is, but he's And he was talking to me on it when we heard the shots. He... He said they were coming after him, and they... They shot him, and... Easy, easy. He's dead. Robin's dead. Now, don't jump to conclusions. He is, I tell you. They had him trapped, and then... And they, they shot him. Listen to me, Batman. Listen to me, please. Oh, the he's boy... he's dead. Robin is dead. Oh, you've got to listen. Robin may be all right. How could he be? You heard the shots yourself... Look at this radio. I know. He was holding it, talking to me. I know it looks bad, but Robin's a clever youngster. I won't believe anything happened to him until I see it with my own eyes. Now, come on, pull yourself together. We've got to look for him. Oh, where do we look? They... They finished him, and... And they took him away somewhere. Oh, those dirty rats. I'll get them for this. I'll make them pay for what they did if it takes me the rest of my life. That's right. Get mad, then we can get to work. I'll make them pay. I swear it. You hear me, Superman? I hear you. Now, hang on to my shoulders. We're going upstairs. Where? Up where we can get a good view of this region. Are you ready? Go ahead. Okay, here we go, then. Up! Up! <laughs> now, let's see. You flew over here before. Only near the highway. No, it's all open country to the north and east. Just farms and a few villages. Well, a gang of murderers wouldn't hold up in a small village. That'd attract too much attention. Right. Of course, they might take over a farm, but that'd be pretty risky, too. Well, same kind of country to the west. Hey, wait. What? That patch of woods to the south. It's pretty small to hide in. Looks smaller than it really is from up here. Let's have a look at that. Away! See anything down there? Not yet. No, I didn't think you would. My hunch is they made for a big city. Maybe Metropolis. Well, I'll be... Look, Batman. What? Where? Almost straight down. And a little to your right. See? Oh, there are too many trees in the way. Get ready for the shock of your life. Hang on now. Here we go. Down! What the... Robin! Batman! Well, I see you two know each other. And Superman. Listen, what happened to you up in the sky last night? Never mind that. Are you all right? Oh, I'm a little hungry, and I got a few ant bites in the cave where I was hiding. But apart from that, I'm ticking on all cylinders. Oh, thank heaven. But listen, we've got to go after the other Superman. He and his gang are up to something. There isn't any other Superman, Robin. That's what you think. It was all done with mirrors. Or let's say with a miniature dirigible and a long rope ladder. Huh? Hey, wait a minute. So that's why that big ox walked all the way here. He was limping, and I Never thought... mind. You know, you scared me out of ten years of my life. Oh, what's ten years to a young buck like you, Pappy? <laughs> well, listen to the insolent puppy. I ought to turn you over my knee and tan your hide. Well, what did I do? I know I let the guys get away, but there were too many for me, and they had guns. You never should have gone after the bank robber alone in the first place. Oh, I had to. You were out cold. Yes, and you left me lying there in the bank vault. A fine pal you turned out to be. I knew you were okay, just knocked out. Gee whiz, somebody had to go after the guy. I thought he'd done something to Superman... But now he got away and his other three pals, too. Wait a minute, Robin. You said you trailed a man to his hideout. Where's that? It's an old broken-down house just beyond these woods, well, but... what are we waiting for? Let's get over there. Uh, nobody's there, Batman. I can see it from here. They scrammed right after the bank robber got there. First, they all ran out and kept looking up in the sky. Then they started packing up a car. Mm-hmm. He must have told them the dirigible hadn't been at Lordville to pick him up. They were afraid it might have fallen into the hands of the police. Well, we may never find them now. Chances are they'll lie low. No, they won't. They're up to something else. Something big. They are? What, Robin? I don't know what, but it adds up to $50 million. $50 million? That's what I heard one of them say. A fat party with a fancy vest and spats. We're going ahead anyhow, he said. That was when they were packing up their car. There's $50 million waiting for us, he said. And we're going to get it tonight. Tonight? What else, Robin? That's all. They spotted me right after that and chased me. Oh? I got away from them. That's when I called Candy Myers on the walkie-talkie. Uh-huh. Say, how come you answered that, man? Oh, we were with Candy in Lordville. Uh, go on, then what? And they saw me and started popping at me like I was a clay pigeon. So I dumped the radio and made for these woods with them after me. I saw a little cave between some rocks and I went in like a rabbit. I stayed there a pretty long time till I was sure they were gone. And then you two showed up. 
Ah, so they're after $50 million, eh? Nothing small about them. You said it. That's practically all the money in the world. Well, not quite, but it's enough. Well, so I was right. What about? The plan to pull their big job tonight, the $50 million one, and blame it on me. Jeepers. And that means the robbery tonight will have to be along the same lines as the previous ones. Only this time, the money won't be donated to charity. But $50 million? Why, there's not a bank in the country with any way near that much cash in their vaults. I know, that's what's bothering me. Say, wait a minute, wait. Maybe our strong-arm friend is planning to break into Fort Knox. Sure, where all the gold is. Oh, I doubt it. Gold isn't negotiable now. Well, then what's the answer? I don't know, Batman, but we've got to find out and fast. Come on, let's check their hideout. It's just barely possible they may have left a clue behind. Come on, it's just a mile or two. I know a faster way than walking. You get under this arm, Robin. That's it, and you get under this one, Batman. There we are. All set? All set. Let's go. Up and away! Leaping up through the woods with Batman and Robin in his arms, Superman streaks to the hideout of the mysterious bank robber. Arriving at the broken-down farmhouse, which had been the headquarters of the mysterious bank robber and his henchmen, Superman, Batman, and Robin searched it thoroughly, but failed to find any clue to the gang or the $50 million theft scheduled for tonight. As we join our three friends now, they are in the weather-beaten barn. Uh, not a thing in here, either. This is where they probably kept their dirigible. I suppose so, but that doesn't help us now. Can't understand. Say, what's this? Huh? What, Superman? Oh. There's a map under this loose floorboard. A map? Yes. Wait till I get it. There we are. Oh, let's see what it is. Uh-oh. Look at this, Batman. Let's see. Oh, it's a map of the state. Uh-huh. What are those ink crosses on it? They mark the towns our bank robber visited. See? Here's Glen Forest. There's Thomasville. Lynn Haven. There's Lordville. Uh-huh. Just the way we charted them on our map the other night. Right. Now we know why they followed the course of a rough circle. Why? Because the miniature dirigible had a short cruising range. And the big valley country below Metropolis, with the large villages situated around the rim of the valley, was just right for their purposes. Ah, we know the answers to all the questions, except the $64 one now. Huh? You mean the $50 million one? Yes. Got to find the answer before tonight. How? Where is $50 million? All in one place, I mean. Fifty million dollars. Something familiar about that amount. I wouldn't mind being familiar with it. I wouldn't even mind being friendly with it. Fifty million dollars. Seems to me I read about it somewhere. It might... Wait a minute. I think... What? It's just a vague thought, but if I'm right... Well, I've got to be right. Listen, you two, we've got a lot of work to do, and fast. Come with me. Where to? Outside. What's up? No time to explain now. My hunch is right. We may be able to stop the biggest robbery in history and meet my impersonator face to face. All right, come on now. Under my arms with you two again. And keep your fingers crossed. This hunch has got to pay off. It must. Up! Up! And away! Leaping up from the deserted farm, carrying Batman and Robin, Superman rockets away into the sky. What is his plan to foil the greatest robbery in history and to capture his impersonator? the mysterious bank robber who was apparently possessed of superhuman strength. When Robin, young assistant to the famous Batman, trailed the mysterious bank robber who has been impersonating Superman, he learned that the amazingly powerful burglar and his henchmen had planned a $50 million robbery to take place that very night. But Robin was discovered and pursued before he could overhear any details of the plot. And when Superman and Batman arrived at the hideout, they found it deserted. Carrying his two friends, the Man of Steel streaked back to Metropolis. And as we join them now, they are in the library of the Daily Planet, where for hours they have been searching through back files of the newspaper. Darkness has long since closed down over the city, and the worried frown on Superman's face deepens. Listen. How far back have you gone, Batman? I've just finished last July. Read through every paper? And everything but the one ads. Mm -hmm. How about you, Robin? I'm on June. Looks like the Detroit Tigers are going to win the pennant last year. This is no time for jokes, sonny boy. Well, I went all the way back to April and May. Jim Olson and Lois Lane covered the first three months of the year. I'm sure the story I read was in the paper this year. Well, can't you remember anything about the story? No, I can't. Just that it had something to do with $50 million. I wish we could find it. It might tell us where my impersonator plans to strike tonight. Well, that finishes June. Well, maybe you read the story in some other paper. 
No, I seem to remember it was in the planet. Well, we've covered every issue for this year. You say you're sure it wasn't before that? No, it couldn't have been. Oh, look. Let's try it another way. What? Uh, where is there $50 million? In one place, I mean. In the land of my dreams. Robin. Sorry, Pappy. Oh, we tried that before, Batman, and didn't get anywhere. Banks don't carry that much money, and we ruled out Fort Knox. It's too heavily guarded, and besides, gold isn't negotiable now. Uh, you had Henderson tip off Fort Knox anyway, didn't you? Oh, sure. Oh, we've got to find that story, otherwise we're licked. Uh, I'm afraid we are, chum. Well, I can't be. Unless that false Superman is captured and exposed, some people will still believe that I robbed those banks. They'll no longer trust and cooperate with me, and if that happens, I'm finished. Oh, don't, don't say that. Well, it's true. Robin, stop that racket. Oh, sorry again. I can't sit still. You gents realize what time it is? Oh, it's about 10 o'clock. It's five minutes to 11. It is. What? Uh-huh, and the phony Superman always does his stuff between 11 and 1. Oh, that's right. What are we going to do, Superman? I wish I knew. To think of anything, let me know. Hey, it's starting to snow. Would you like to run home and get your sled? Sure, why not? I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. I'll Christmas you unless you pipe down. What? Uh, nothing, nothing. I just told Robin to pipe down. I'm nervous enough without his corny tenor jangling my nerves. Oh, I resent that. No, no, no. Wait a minute. You said something about Christmas. Did I? Uh, oh, yes, yes. I. Wait a minute. I... Wait a minute. Christmas. Christmas. What's the matter with him? Search me. I've got it. Huh? What? The story I was looking for. It's in the magazine section of the Planet's Special Christmas Edition. You sure? Yes. I didn't see any magazine sections. Well, they're filed separately on this shelf over here. Now, Christmas issue should be in this pile. Here we are. Wait in. Find the Christmas number. Come on, Robin. Let me at him. These are the February issues. Well, I've got January. Well, here are the December ones. December 30th, 23rd. 23rd, that's the one. Let me have it, Robin. Well, this is the 23rd. Christmas is... That's the Christmas number. The magazine section only appears on Sundays. Oh. Now, oh, let's see. Story on the UNO. Fashions. Team. Ah, here it is. Where? Here. Right here. See? A story on the oldest banknote company in the country, the Metropolis Banknote Corporation. What's a banknote corporation? It makes paper money for the government. I thought the Mint did that. Oh, the Mint makes all the coins, but not all the paper money. Now, let's see. Oh, here we are. Listen to this. Founded during the American Revolution and still situated on its original site on Lower Dock Street, the Metropolis Banknote Corporation will begin printing its final issue of paper money for the United States government on Christmas Day. An issue of, get this, $50 million oh. will be printed at the rate of $1 million per day and will be completed on February 13th. Wait, that's today. Right. Jeepers. Listen. The money will be stored in the corporation's time-honored vaults until the issue is completed. On the following day, February 14th, it will be removed to the United States Treasury and the Metropolis Banknote Corporation, oldest company of its kind in America, will formally close its doors, its long career of service at an end. Well, there it is. What are we waiting for? You took the words right out of my mouth, Pappy. Come on, this might be the answer. My hunch says you're right. There's exactly $50 million in the corporation's vaults right now. And the phony Superman means to bust in and collect it. Well, if he does, we'll collect him. I'll just raise this window. What for? The Superman Express leaves on this track, John. Oh, fancy me for getting that. Do you prefer the right arm or the left arm compartment, Batman? No time for clowning now, Robert. Under this arm with you. Check. You under this arm, Batman? Double check. All right, hang on. Here we go. Out. Up. And away! Leaping from the Daily Planet Library with Batman and Robin in his arms, Superman streaks through the night sky to the wholesale warehouse district on the river, dark and deserted at this late hour. On Lower Dock Street, the Man of Steel swoops low over an ancient dust-grimed tomb-like structure, its doors and windows heavily barred, only its first floor showing illumination. There it is. The Metropolis Banknote Corporation. Well, everything looks quiet on the outside. What does your X-ray vision say about the inside, Superman? All quiet there, too. Just a few guards sitting around. Sitting around? It'd be a tough job breaking into that old fortress, Robin. Not for our bank robber friend. He's got superhuman strength. I wonder if he has. You wouldn't wonder if you tangled with him like that man and I did. He's almost as strong as you are, Superman. I still wonder. Have you forgotten how he ripped those six-inch steel doors off their hinges? I'll have to see him do it before I believe it. Come on, stubborn cuss, isn't he? Uh, maybe he'll find out for himself tonight. That's what I'm hoping. And the sooner the better. All right, we'll drop down and hide in the shadows across the street. Here we go. Down! What's that? It's the chime clock in the export company tower. It's just 11. Yeah, we ought to get action pretty soon, then. 
Keep your fingers crossed. There go those chimes again. It's midnight. Smart boy. You can tell time. It counts up to 12, too. Good. <laughs> I just want to count how many times we can bounce that phony Superman off the floor. He bounced us the last two times. They say the third time is the charm. Where is he? That's what I'd like to know, Robin. That's what I'd like to know. One o'clock. The latest they ever showed up to rob a bank was just a minute or two after one. I know. And he did most of his jobs before midnight. I hope we didn't guess wrong. Make that hope for two. Wait, what? There's a car coming. The big fellow's driving it. Two men are in the back seat. Where? Is it? Uh oh. What now? No soap. They turned off into River Street. Oh, shucks. Superman. Yes? I'm no crepe hanger, but he's always showed up before this. Maybe we drew the wrong car tonight. I don't know. I was sure we didn't. But I'm beginning to have a few doubts myself. You mean while we're hanging around this place, the phony Superman might be making his haul someplace else? It could be, Robin. Jeepers. Well, we won't give up the ship yet. This is our only hope. Come on, you two. Hang on. We're going up to cruise around a bit. All set? Up! Up! And away! Anxiously, Superman, carrying Batman and Robin, circles over the dark warehouse district, his keen eyes searching for the mysterious bank robber. Have our friends guessed wrong? And is the largest burglary in history occurring at another place? It is now 1.30 in the morning, and Superman with Batman and Robin is still cruising high in the air above the tomb-like Metropolis Banknote Corporation, in whose underground vaults $50 million is stored. But the mysterious bank robber who masquerades as the Man of Steel has not put in an appearance. And our friends are fast losing their last bit of hope. Oh, I'm afraid we missed the boat, Superman. We well, didn't even get close enough to wave. I hate to agree, but it... Wait a minute. What's the matter? We didn't miss the boat. Huh? What do you mean? The false Superman has arrived. He has? Where? I, I don't see him. He and six other men are in a tunnel under the bank company vaults. A tunnel? Yes. It's an old sewer tunnel. Below the underground vaults where the $50 million is stored. Jeepers. All right, take a deep breath now. In a moment, we're going to meet my impersonator and find out if he's as strong as you say he is. Tensely, Batman and Robin wait for Superman to act. To bring them face to face with the mysterious bank robber, who even now is clothed in a blue costume and red cape identical to the Man of Steel's, and who apparently possesses superhuman strength. What will happen when these two meet? Learning that a mysterious bank robber who has been impersonating him and apparently possesses superhuman strength planned a $50 million burglary, Superman and his friends, Batman and Robin, found a clue in a back issue of the Daily Planet. The Metropolis Banknote Company, which prints paper money for the Treasury, had that day completed the printing of $50 million and had stored it in the company's underground vaults. Carrying Batman and Robin, Superman hovered in the dark sky above the ancient tomb-like building. And shortly after one o'clock in the morning, his X-ray vision spotted the mysterious bank robber and six men in an old sewer tunnel directly beneath the vault. As we continue now, having obtained entrance to the building, our three friends are in the basement vaults. Listen. What are they doing now, Superman? Removing the loose concrete. What loose concrete? Under a section of this floor. They must have been working on it a long time. The concrete is at least eight inches thick. Jesus. Get ready. They'll be coming through any second now. All right. False oh, Superman is finishing the job with a padded sledgehammer. Hey, he is pretty strong. He's plenty strong. Robert and I tangled with him and got bounced around like rubber dolls. We know. Yeah, and don't forget how he ripped open those steel bank doors. Hold it. It's broken through. Now, listen. Let me handle this. Are you kidding? You said he had six huskies with him. I know, but I just... Look at... Here comes the first guy through the hole. Quick, behind the vaults. Okay, now don't show yourselves until I give the word. Are the others coming up? Yes. We'll wait until they're all above decks and then we'll move. Quiet now. There are six of them and the phony Superman, huh? Yes. We're outnumbered just enough to make it interesting. Okay. Let's jump them before they can get to their guns. Leave the man in the costume and cape to me. All right. 
Let's go, Robin. Right with you, Pappy. Good evening, gentlemen. Hey, look, three guys. What's well, yeah. you here? Oh, here's my calling card. Read it when you wake up. Right, get out of here. You're the one I want to meet. All right, my pony friend. Let's see if you do have superhuman strength. Nice going, Robin. Stay away from those guns, mister. Yeah. Oh, you want me? Love you. Okay. With your eyes a bit. Oh, that a boy, Batman. Oh, your eyes are popping out. Ranger, do you mind if I pop back in for you? Hey, I'm running out of sparring partners, Batman. There's just this one left. I'll take him. Pardon me, Frank. You're the shooting show. Well, there were six little gunmen, but now there are none. Now we can help Superman. Oh, he doesn't need any help. Look behind you. Christopher Columbus. He's swinging the phony around like a Ferris wheel. I get dizzy. What for us? By all means, we've got some talking to do. Down on your feet. There we are. You strong. Like lion. Superman's got him tamed, uh, Robin. Tame as a kitten. Now, what's your name? I, Boris. Boris what? Boris Mikhailovich Petrovsky. Oh, brother, what a mouthful. Quiet, Robin. I, not bad man. I do nothing wrong. Oh, no? How about robbing all those banks? I no keep money. I give to... Uh, to, uh, how you say, a char- a char- charity, sure, to make the Donna. police think I was the thief. But the $50 million in these vaults weren't going to charity. This was the big deal you were building up to. You intended to keep this money and brand me as the burglar. Oh, I no keep any money. Mr. Simpson, he say, all this I do is, uh, uh, how you say, a public, a public, uh, it gets Boris very big name. Why did you want to get publicity? Boris go on stage, make money. The stage? The other. Uh, people pay much money, see Boris. Strongest man in the whole world. Uh, Mr. Simpson, he say, Boris make lots of money. Who's Mr. Simpson? Uh, that he there, lie on the floor. Fancy vest and spats? The other. He give a ticket, come America. He say, make Boris rich man. He say, Boris do like he say, get much of the public... I think he's telling the truth, Robin. I don't. Nobody could be that dumb. Da, da. Mr. Simpson say, Boris very dumb. That mean Boris very strong, no? You, you say you believe him, Superman? Yes, I think he was taken advantage of by this Simpson. Played for a sucker, you mean? That's right. Of course, we'll check on his story. Tell me, Boris, how did you open those bank doors and vaults? And how did you bend those steel bars into pretzels? Hey, Mr. Simpson, give Boris this. What's that? It looks like an aluminum cylinder. It's just what it is. There are three electronic tubes inside it and a battery strapped around his chest. Boris holds this to the door, still gets soft. Gets soft? Da, da. It start melt. Then Boris take hold and pull the rest away. Not hard for so strong men like me. Great, Schubert. You mean this thing melts steel? I don't believe it. I do. I've heard of diathermic rays used to soften steel. Remember I showed you how the bank door in Lordville was wrenched out of shape, Batman? Hey, that's right. And it was done with this electronic gadget. Well, I'll be jiggered. Oh. Here comes the police. Henderson's eyes are going to pop when he sees these goons stretched out on the floor. Uh, uh-huh. You think they got a jail strong enough to hold this guy? Oh, no. Please, I no go to jail. I not be bad. Well, that'll be up to a judge to decide, Boris. That's how we do things here in America. Hey, but I, Boris, I good man. I not do nothing. Order in the court. Boris Petrovsky. Step up, Boris. The... Since it is evident that you're only an innocent dupe in the hands of George Simpson, alias George Tanner, who has a long police record, this court is patrolling you in the custody of Clark Kent. Court adjourned. You're free, Boris. The judge isn't sending you to jail. Oh, I kiss the hand of judge. Never mind that. Come along. I'm going to get you a job operating one of the Daily Planet presses where you can put some of that strength of yours to good use. Oh, I am so happy. So glad. I With don't... tears of happiness rolling down his cheeks, Boris, the big Russian, leaves the courtroom in the custody of his newfound friend, the man he had innocently tried to wrong. And so Superman has solved another baffling mystery. Tune in, same time, same station, and follow the adventures of Superman.